Hey everyone, welcome back to the Zelda Informer Podcast, I believe episode 22, and this is going to be a bit of a, a special episode, not only because we have some amazing news, but because this is technically the last episode where I am your full main host of this show. Uh, no worries, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, Alfred, the co-host, is actually going to be taking over the full-time hosting duties, which for those that, that don't know, it obviously means opening up the show, kind of guiding the flow of it, uh, sometimes controlling the conversation. I know I talk too much at times. Um, but it also means like gathering up all the topics and you know trying to keep up on everything, kind of all, all the pre-production and post-production work, uh, except for weeks when he's too busy. So I gotta I gotta fill in as the main host or have to do the <laughs> editing that week. It's kind of something we'll work out between each other. That's the benefit of having two hosts. Um, but he's gonna be kind of doing all that, so I can focus all my efforts on the Nintendo Prime podcast uh, and working on all the production value for that. Uh, while also doing all my other Zelda Informer obligations, which, for, for Massey's purposes, the owner pretty much is driving traffic to the site. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever I could do to maintain traffic levels, uh, which generally just means creating some really, really awesome content for you guys, whether it's the podcast, Boss Man series, which I want to get going again. I actually have two episodes of the Boss Man already recorded. I just haven't had time to edit any video for it. Um, but more on that later, because we have a jam-packed podcast. And this week... We are joined by Mr. Darren. Hey, how's it going? Who's very happy to be here because I, <laughs> we might be talking about a little bit, little console reveal here um, that unfortunately he couldn't make it on the Nintendo Prime podcast for because Darren is a regular on that one. And then Mr. Yes. Kristen. Hi, glad to be back. Glad to be back. Um, we also have a little bit, a, a little bit of exciting news. I, I don't want to to spoil it for him too much. We have a, a Zelda former staff member who actually has a phone interview with nintendo for a job yeah so congrats. like congrats man you know yep. I, I know you listen to the podcast he's actually someone who's been on the podcast before yep. um mm-hmm. our live at e3 podcast so uh congrats to you my man and let's get into the week that is the fallout from the nintendo switch reveal mm-hmm. also on a side note we have alfred with us yes Yes. Well, I kind of. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. guess I never. You already mentioned that I was here. <laughs> yeah, I did mention he was here, but all right. Um, so, uh, I was going to start off talking about the Nintendo Switch, but this is the Zelda Informer podcast, so everyone knows that I like to start off with something Zelda, and thankfully, the Nintendo Switch showed off some Zelda. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So, the quickest thing I-, I could get from looking at the new Breath of the Wild footage uh, from the Nintendo Switch reveal is that there was a new like boss like enemy like it looked like maybe another overworld boss kind of situation yeah yeah um do you guys have any thoughts and theories on on what exactly that thing is the giant had a giant eye the goblin thing yeah some people th- maybe the high knocks can yeah. we come back no problem mm. i it kind of looked more like a, a book yeah thing. From something with blin at the end like a big yeah 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 it yeah. definitely looked like like obviously it, it didn't look like something we haven't seen in Zelda before. We just haven't seen them this big. Like, this was a yeah. huge... Yeah. Clearly, clearly like, overworld mini-boss. And it had the signature big, weak eye kind of in the it. middle of it that you're supposed to whack at. Well, that's no surprise. Yeah. It, and that's kind of the way that enemy has always been. <laughs> um, at least it doesn't have two giant hands and just a head. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, I also just wanted to bring that up. I haven't done a close enough examination yet. Um, I know, unfortunately, Daniel, who couldn't make it to the podcast this week, he wanted to. He's going to be doing a, a really close examination of the of the actual footage of the game in there. Um, but did you guys notice any differences between that and the supposed Wii U version? It looked a little better. Like yeah. Of course, we learned later that that wasn't like native. Like it's not, it wasn't actually running on it yet. Yeah. It doesn't that doesn't mean it's not intended to be Switch. <clears throat> Just yeah. We're not 100% I mean, sure. It could have been Wii U footage. It, it may have been recorded off of the Switch and then put into the video later. It yeah. may have been recorded on the Wii U. Or it, it looked it could a have little been recorded better. off a of PC. Yeah, it, you know, we, we don't know with that. Um, I'm, I can only go with what I'm speculating is that it's going to run better, infinitely better. Um, and that's what my hope is. But it did look... We did get a lot of new footage from it. Sure. Like that big boss and then the 40 extra minutes of gameplay. So that was a bonus yeah. to the day. Yeah, I mean that that forty extra minutes of gameplay that was uh, 
just for people who don't know, we because I just got this up on the site at the time of this recording, like right before we started, and that the forty extra minutes of gameplay footage is unedited. It does come from mm-hmm. Nintendo. It's all direct feed, and it is the Wii U version. They're very clearly using the gamepad. Um, don't understand a dang thing they're saying because it's all Japanese. <laughs> Uh, but it, it's basically just the beginning area of the game, um, just unedited. So you see them die. You see them, you know, experiment with different mechanics and different enemies. Um, nothing overly new per se, but new in that there's no <clears throat> demo restriction on the time. So it's just kind of watching someone play the opening of the game. For Do we want to talk about cool. that? They're uh, not rushed. The yeah, translated not, they were playing thing? it like they were rushed. Yeah, that's right. They translated from the GCGX playthrough. The what? The one that game center, uh, yeah, the playthrough that we got a few information or a few tidbits of information from. You mean the one that talked about the dungeons and stuff? Yeah, the dungeons. Yeah, and that was all bullshit. System. It was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you guys see a, a thing floating around, um, it came originally from 4chan, which you know is about as reliable <laughs> as take take with an entire mine of salt. Yeah, 4chan. I mean, they, they've gotten some leaks, but it's just. It's very rare. I have a little less respect for the staff member who brought it up because he was probably on 4chan when he saw that. So, <laughs> yeah, because no one, no one's reported about it. Like th- that video that so the translation was from has been reported at a whole bunch of sites, but nothing mentioned from it about anything new. And it felt weird that like GameSpot would post the video but not like have any additional information because they have people who speak Japanese on mm-hmm. their team. So, like, it, when I saw that, it kind of made me question it. Because at first I was going through it um, trying to... Because I don't, I don't speak Japanese. I don't understand <laughs> Japanese. So, I was trying to understand it. And there was, like, some rough translate tools out there for these kind of videos. And they kind of sort of sounded like that was what was going on. And then uh, someone that I know that happens to natively understand Japanese listened to, like, the first 20 minutes. And none of that stuff was mentioned. So... Um, Obviously, it could have been mentioned towards the end, but then if you go through that 4chan thread, pretty much there's a whole bunch of people on there like all pissed off because it's fake. So uh, don't don't believe what it says. Yeah, don't it's believe 4chan. what it says. So, so uh, j- just to kind of give a run, it'd be really cool if this was true, by the way. You know, the, the the supposed report from that video, which we posted on the site and doesn't exist. Like, it's not. this isn't real. Is something like one, one main dungeon per area, which I think would excite a lot of people. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I, I think there's... If you go back and look at the map, there's something like seven areas. Yeah. So yeah, at, at least seven it. confirmed areas that we could see. So that would be seven dungeons. Um, you know, the hundred plus mini dungeons, which is what the what of course the report started off with because we already know that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how that's how. And those, then something about an underground yeah, system, so that's so which underground I thought was very interesting. And then uh, what was the? There was one other big one. The towns, the every towns, location yeah. has its own town. Like, each each area has its own town, which all the side quests come from. Which, all of it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, that would be really, really cool if that's all true. Like, it does logically kind of make sense. I, Outside of the fact that there's seven areas and that opening area does not have a main dungeon. So, Well, that we know of. That, we, that we're aware of. But, like, I, I've yeah. explored the entirety of that area. If uh, They could have ripped it out, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you I, rip out an entire dungeon. From that area. Make it. I don't know. I, I think a lot of people believe the 4chan stuff mainly because it, you know, not only because like a lot of Switch rumors became true, but also for a fact that a lot of the rumors 4chan that you guy at 4chan posts up made sense in a way. So, well, like the Switch rumors, no one really believed crap from 4chan. Yeah, the, 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 those rumors were coming from Eurogamer, reputable place. Um, let's play video games. You know, let's play video games. Emily which, Rogers, which co- which is basically Laura Kate Dale, and Laura Kate Dale is used to work at Destructoid. Um, she works at Kotaku and, and Kotaku. So, like, mm-hmm. she actually, you know, obviously has been inside the video game media, like at major outlets, not like Zelda Informer. Not that we're not cool and everything, but we don't have like those big contacts. Like, just this past E three, for the first time in like the eight years Zelda Informer has been around, we finally have a contact that works at Nintendo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, like that's how long it took, you know, us. We to might get have some. another one yeah. soon if you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, we might have another one soon if uh, he gets the job. Although we start getting know, them on the inside, and then we. That's why I didn't everything. mention any names. <laughs> Don't get them fired before he's even hired. Um, <laughs> yeah. But no, so it, it's kind of one of those things where uh, I don't even know where I was just going with that. To be honest, just no, ignored t- the, totally the four chan. 
Tw- yeah, it just kind of thing. ignore 4chan. Like, a lot of these rumors just came from, uh, you know, uh, places that are a bit more reputable than something in, like, 4chan. Like, even stick, even with, stick with Reddit. Yeah, you could, even you Reddit's could put more... Names, you could put names to the rumors. Like, who was responsible for them mm-hmm. this time around. Um, Emily Rogers... She has been lambasted, especially as Elden Former, by everyone besides the staff. The staff, of, uh, we've been kind of easy on her. Um, and she was one of the main rumor people behind this, and she nailed it. Just as an example of someone who, you know, was clearly in the know about the, about the Switch and everything. So, and, 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 and to be fair, she was wrong about gender options. Yeah. So but like, like, she like doesn't we mentioned last time, about there, there was plenty of reasons to be legit like skeptical of stuff she says. But we mentioned it last time. You know, a broken clock is still right twice a day. Yeah, so. but I mean, <laughs> you, 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 you could say it. But see, whenever I hear like broken clock is still right twice a day, that means she's just making a bunch of shit up and seeing what sticks to the wall. <laughs> and like, obviously, some of it's going to stick. Um, yeah, all There'd be a lot of, like, more. Literally, on the wall. everything she has stated. <laughs> Well, like, everything she has stated about the Switch was 100% true. So yeah. So it's like, this isn't just throwing him out of the wall. She knows. Mm-hmm. She hasn't seen it herself, clearly, but she knows. Um, so that, that's just really cool. Plus, now it helps that, like, Laura Kate Dale, who was 100% spot on, and claims that she actually has a contact inside Nintendo, which is crazy. Um, like, she actually broke down where all of her rumors came from. Mm-hmm. Um, all the different sources that she has. And, uh, like, that's that's nuts. And, like, she's all like, yeah, like, Emily Rogers knows people, too. And I'm like, okay, well, all right. <laughs> I mean, clearly she does. So, uh, I think that's kind of a nice transition to let's just talk about that Switch, baby. Mm-hmm. That cool. Nintendo Switch. Because, obviously, that's the topic of every of the whole Internet. It's all anyone's mm-hmm. talking about. Um, they dissected the game pad into three parts. Little Little <laughs> dinky bits of information have been coming out every day. Uh, the day that this podcast comes out, we're probably going to have a nice chunk of new information from the investors meeting. Mm. Oh, um, that's right. That's this week. So just so people know, this podcast is recorded on Mondays. So the investors meeting is happening or has happened before you listen to this most likely. And so we're not talking about anything that came out of that. So if they announce price, you know, or anything like we have no idea. Um, all we have is what analysts are saying and what Nintendo has said for like 100% certain. And then the pe- the rumor people that got all the stuff right have also released more information. That so if you rely on this podcast for news, uh, go to ZeldaInformer. Yeah. dot com. <laughs> yep. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Or you can or you can check on Nintendo Prime. We've been adding a few more details there as well about about this specific system, um, like the full mm-hmm. publisher list, which we'll probably get into here in a little bit. So. Mm-hmm. Nintendo Switch. Obviously, I've, I've talked a lot about it already with the ZI Reacts. And um, for those who don't know, the Nintendo Prime Podcast, which will be published before this one, uh, is now published at Zelda Informer t- as well. So you'll probably see all my thoughts about Nintendo Switch there. I'm going to kind of turn this over to our, my co-host, Alfred, and the rest of the gang here. <coughs> Go, like, start reacting. Start talking about Zelda Switch. Like, <clears throat> like, this is huge. This is the next generation yeah. of Nintendo <clears throat> stuff. And... Most of my friends, uh, most of my roommates, I live with six other guys, um, and even they were getting kind of excited, kind of hyped for it, because, not because it's, you know, you, like it looks like a, the Wii U again, um, which is at first instinct what it looks like, the only difference here is that they're marketing it better, um, but, you know, they saw the trailer for it, they're like, wow, that looks pretty cool, um, they saw the games simulated on it, and whether or not those games are going to be the games that we get on it, like Skyrim, NBA. We know we're getting a new Mario game, obviously. Like, that's not... They wouldn't just make up an entire Mario game to put on um, the console Plus, trailer. Miyamoto teased Mario last yeah. year. Or not... Or this summer. And so we, we already kind of have an idea. Like, Skyrim is a possibility, maybe. Um, but we know that we're going to get, like, Splatoon. We know that we're going to get a new Mario game. We know that we're going to get Breath of the Wild. Those look like launch games to me. Um... Which would be great. Those would be great launch games. I'm really excited for that. Um, and I think launch Nint- window games. Yeah. yeah, launch window games. Maybe not launch day yeah. games. Um, but one of the things that we, one of the things that I, I think the most exciting thing about this for me wasn't necessarily the console reveal, but the fact or but how they revealed it. Like this is going back to like older Nintendo back in the Wii era of commercials where they're clearly showing off what the console does in a way that conveys the entire message of it to the audience. 
and makes it understandable without doing a Nintendo Direct. Like, there was no one going up on stage saying, well, this is what it is, this is what it does. I mean, I'd love to see a Nintendo Direct for the games, but I think we all have a pretty good idea of how the Switch works now and what to expect when it comes out. And I'm, I know I'm excited for it. I'm hoping that they don't, like release other information later on that kind of kills that excitement because it's a huge possibility that we could learn some things that like one of the more troubling things that i've heard is the fact that the gamepad quote unquote might have only like a three hour battery life which doesn't sound too bad but if this is supposed to be a primarily portable like game system that's the marketing it as a primarily home console yeah but you can take on the most of it was like a good portion of that commercial was they taking it on the go they're taking it on planes. Um, and even at one point, Emily Rogers t- tweeted out that if they're marketing this as a, more like a, even though it's a console, but something that you take portably, you know, she was hoping for like more things on it, like maybe even a Netflix. Like, hope, like that's kind of a standard thing to have now on a console to have like Netflix support, Hulu support, Crunchyroll support, um, Amazon Video, and all that stuff. But I want to see how they handle third parties with this console and not just games but third parties in general like third party apps because i think that that'd be really cool to see um but like you said nate we're going to go ahead and get into the third parties that are coming onto the system and that have pledged support and keep in mind that they've pledged support for it that doesn't mean that they're actually making a game for it right now like we have confirmed ubisoft and we have confirmed sega um and i think that is that all we know for sure that they're having a game uh, image and form games yeah um but like there's you know on the list it said bethesda and from software and atlas and a bunch of other ones and that right now is just saying that they are pledging to support the switch that doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna get all games from them yet so take that like it's exciting news don't get me wrong to see all those names saying that we're interested in this console but don't get especially from software especially from software especially bethesda um, those two names should get you, get you guys excited for what this thing could do. If they're believing in it that much, if they're willing to pledge support for it, then you know you have. I don't think we have anything to worry about with this console. I don't yeah, think it's going to be. Just, just remember anymore. with that pledge support, um, I think that means that at least all of the game publishers on that list we're going to get at least one game out of them. Yeah. You know, I, the, I think that's the only way those even appear on that list is they've they've told Nintendo, look, we're we're going to do at least one title and see what happens. Um, so. That could be a Dark we, Souls we don't know what. 3 like, remaster, or like like we saw Skyrim like remastered shown on the system. Um, now, obviously, that is not a confirmed title for it for mm-hmm. the system. Uh, obviously, it was heavily heavily featured, so it would be really weird if that did not come to the system after being heavily featured. But uh, the official word from Bethesda is that they have nothing to say or nothing to announce about any specific titles for the system and nintendo yep. recently announced that all the footage was superimposed and so it was not necessarily natively running on the switch doesn't mean it wasn't natively running on the switch like in terms of when they recorded the footage um it wasn't natively running during the commercial none of the well, we know because there was a person who was on the commercial that got interviewed by game explain that none of the none of the actual systems like they were they were holding like legit systems that worked but they didn't actually get to play any games on it. So all that footage you see in the show, like even when you see it seamlessly switch from the TV to the to the Switch when he pulls it off the dock, um, like that's all superimposed. That's not like happening in real time. Yeah. Which is common practice for productions very, like Very these. common practice, especially well, like, like yeah. this early. <clears throat> well, also if you want to like, as, as a videographer, you're not going to get a good picture of, this, of, the pic- of the screen with a camera. Like oh, no, you're, it's not, not. going to look that good. Yeah, it's not going to sound that good. So. It's not going to look good at all. So that that is, that makes sense that they would do that. I'm not surprised that they did that. Like if you want to know like a comparison, go back and look at the Game Awards footage for yeah. uh, then titled Zelda U because mm-hmm. uh, it did not look that clean in comparison, no. and that was pre-recorded. So it looks like a GameCube game. Yeah, and like that's how you know like that's what legit <laughs> off-screen footage looks like. Now there's a way that they could do do it to be better, but I mean, it's not like they used a crappy camera for that. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but also, another thing to get excited for is the fact that they're go- they're returning to form with the Pro Controller, and that it's an actual controller, not, like, attached to a Wii mode or anything like that, because that's exciting. Like, that's something that we... Yeah, the thing is, I've, t- I've talked to a few people, and they, and they tell me, the Switch controller looks so uncomfortable. 
but they they didn't see the pro controller. Yeah. They they didn't notice that. They well, just they noticed the the weird controller with the sides that hope. come off. And I'm like, th- there's a there's a pro controller that comes with the two. They're like, oh I, really? I'm like, I, yeah. I think they're going to, because uh, I've actually seen a lot of people complain about uh, those are called the, the two side controllers on it called Joy Con controllers. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you Joy-Con. know, that's I've Which seen is, some people complain yeah. about them, especially when they're like docked in that thing because it looks really silly. Although, if you look at how that actually is shaped, it actually looks just like the Pro Controller. Just on the bottom part is is flat instead of like shaped, mm-hmm. which I don't think is gonna. Yeah, make watch the any difference. watch the trailer again, and then when he takes the sides off, look at the controller and how it looks with the sides off. It looks decent. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, it you know, my only hope, I guess, with the controllers is because there's always gonna be people that think it's gonna be really weird, especially if you're someone who wants to use it strictly as a home console system. Um, I'm I'm kind of hoping use the pro that controller. they include the pro controller yeah that they ship it with every console like at least like just ship it just ship one pro controller with every console because that way you're not saying you can't play the game with those joy-con controllers you can but like we really you know we're we're not lying this is a home console system we want to give Mm -hmm. you the most comfortable controller to use it at home Here's the thing: if they include the controller, which I think we all wanted, to want them to. I don't think they will. It's gonna jack the price up a bit. No, no they're they not won't. going to. And, but it's gonna jack the price up. I'd and almost them rather. You want to sell the, the switch at an affordable price, well, like two hundred fifty dollars to three hundred. You have a choice. You're releasing the system, the base bundle. Like they, they might have like some super package bundle that mm-hmm. includes a controller and some games or whatever. Ooh, no, whatever they decide to. Because there was that one rumor about two different packages for it. Mm-hmm. But like the base bundle, let's say it's like two ninety nine or whatever, they can include something in it. What which one of two things do you think would be better for them? A free game, or the pro controller? Pro controller. That that's a really interesting question. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be the pro controller because a lot of people complained with the Wii controllers and the Wii U controller that they wanted a more traditional controller, and that's where we got the pro controllers from is because of that want and need for the for a standard regular controller. And to not include that in the first place kind of doesn't make sense to me. Like, I understand that you're trying to push the portable aspect of it. Yep. But, I mean, when it's plugged into the TV, you're not really not going to be using the Joy-Con controllers that much. Like, I just, as a, like, I can just see that you're not going to use them a lot. Not that you won't. But, you know, when I sit down and I have it docked, I'm mm-hmm. not going to want to go out of my way to take off the controllers. I'm just going to want to turn it on with the Pro Controller and play a game. And I think a lot of people are going to want to do that, too. Because as yeah, great as those are, you know. Plus, I think there might be people that um, this kind of gets into a fan topic uh, that might well that probably will come up later. Um, some people have been concerned that the you know the sliding on and off of the controllers that over time that can create wear and tear. Yeah, and that those controllers might you know, a year down the road just not stay connected anymore. Mm-hmm. Um. And that might make people too afraid to take them on and off too much like that. Like, if you're always switching between home and, home and on the go, like, obviously when you're at home, you have to, you know, you need a controller to play and when it's docked. And if that's the only controls you have, you're going to take them off. Yeah. Um, you know, and if you're constantly taking it on the go and at home, like a lot of commuters would probably be doing, uh, it, it does seem, you know, almost detrimental to be like, look, you know, if you don't want to worry about winter tear, you got to go buy this other sixty dollars controller with it. So now, <clears> instead of being, you know, two ninety nine, now you're really talking about three hundred and sixty bucks, which doesn't really sound as attractive, um, versus it being in the box. But at the well, same here's... time, games sell systems. Yeah, that's sorry to interject. That's the main reason. Like, I'm not really like I'm excited, but not excited for the Switch. Is just the games. Like I showed. My brother the trailer, my dad the trailer. They like the concept, but overall, the we, we always comes in my house. It comes down to the games. Like for right. me personally too. Like um, I, as much as I love the the whole hybrid thing, it's really cool and stuff. But it's just for me, it always comes down to the games. I need well, to I need to be convinced to be invested. Well, in terms of the wear and tear of the controller, keep in mind too that um, like it or hate it, the iPhone Seven only has that charging port now. And one of the things that happens with, I know, at least the cords for the iPhones 
is that over the course of your use of them, taking it in and out, eventually wears down the pins on those. I don't know how it affects the inside of the phone itself, because I've had phones for like two or three years, and the pins haven't died down on those. It's always, but the, always the, having the trouble cords with the cord. always break. Yeah, the cords always break, whether it's the pins, whether it's the pin part snapping off, or the cord and itself. And that's really frustrating with iPhones, too. Yeah. Because if you want, if you actually want like the best cords, you, you almost have to buy like official iPhone ones. Yep. Because or a really, really expensive... A really, like, really expensive third party. Like, I'm using... Right now, you know, for people at home that don't know, I'm recording this, like, my my video feed part of this podcast with my my iPhone 6S Plus. And the cord I'm using to, to keep it charged during all this is was, like, a $40 six-foot cord that I, that's Duracell branded that has yeah. officially been supported by Apple. And so, the reason I did that is because... It will allow the phone to charge while I transfer information. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of those cheaper lightning cords because they don't have the Apple chip in them. Like there's a a special little microchip they put put in the ends of them. It will either only charge and it'll charge at a slower rate than what lightning should charge at. Or it'll only transfer data and not charge at all. It sucks. Here on the Apple Informer podcast, we have It really sucks. Well, but but that's kind of bringing it all back around to... The, you know, like the system the wear and tear for the, the system like if if they've done something to where they can assure us that it won't wear and tear that much yeah. like over the course of you know because you want the console to last you know six seven years for a lifespan typical lifespan of a console sure um and if it starts if your main the main draw of it the fact that it's a portable console that you can take their trollers on and off of mm-hmm. if that's the main draw of the console say from the games like Kristen said then you're going to want to make sure that there's those are sturdy consoles or sturdy controllers. The, the only thing I think I'd say that might might allow them to get away with it um, is one. Well, two two things. One, they sell the Joy-Con controllers at stores individually. Yeah. Um, not so much in that they are worried about you replacing the ones you have because you, you never want to like sell those extra things on the standalone because that's automatically going to make you think they're cheap mm-hmm. and they're going to break. Even if they are cheap at the store, like let, let's say they're 10 bucks for each Joy-Con controller. Like that, that would be really cheap and really affordable. Um, but more so because you're going to offer custom customizing for those things. Like mm-hmm. say people want that right joystick back above the buttons. You're, you're going to sell ones that do that if people want mm-hmm. that. Like it just won't be the default. Or Joy Cons with specific designs on them, like with yeah. You, you want a D-pad? There, there will be one with a D-pad. Like I, a lot of people haven't talked about the fact that the fact that these are removable means they're replaceable very easily mm-hmm. by different control schemes. Um, and I think that's one way they can get away with the wear and tear a little bit is they could offer like really really cheap. You know, they can basically offer those exact same ones plus a whole bunch of other different versions, really cheap as accessories. And then I think people will be a lot more okay if it does wear and tear a little because it's so cheap to just replace Speaking it. Speaking of that, then, do you think we're going to start seeing, like, um, Mad Cats and other companies come that's, out with Joy-Con that's, controllers? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I can, I, I can definitely don't, see that. I don't think so. Maybe later on down the line, like, not, like, immediately. Like, out yeah, of, well, yeah, like it constantly. definitely won't be immediately. Yeah. Um, I, like, like, I, I, you know, I, I think the actual controllers that attach to the system, I don't think... They're going to be able to... I don't think Nintendo's going to allow that patent to go out there. For the third party? Way. Yeah. I, I think they're going to want to keep that internally. But they will allow things like third-party Mad Cat Pro controllers. Yeah. Um, and all that kind of stuff. If you don't want to pay 60 bucks for a, you know, a more standard controller... You, for a you good could, one, you just buy yeah, a Yeah, or a good one. one. Yeah, like, th- like, let's be honest. The Wii U Pro controller is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's it is. amazingly well built. Like, it, it is the standard of Nintendo quality we've become accustomed to. It's almost in, like, direct, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like the opposite of what the Wii U feels like. Um, not that I think it's poorly built, but you look at it and it looks cheap. It looks like a toy. The Pro Controller does not feel that way. I just um, hate that they, those plug into the Wii Motes. It's my yes. only grip with the Pro Controller. It's just yeah. so stupid that it does that. <laughs> but we've uh, seen that the Pro Controller in this commercial for the Switch, I almost called uh, it the NX, is wireless. Yeah, it's totally wireless. It, there mm-hmm. are Pro Controllers, by the way, for the Wii U that are wireless. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the like, standard like ones. they're the expensive ones. But mm-hmm. yeah, they're, and to be fair, they're actually really hard to find. Because <laughs> um, everybody like wants they, them. The, they, did, they didn't really produce a lot of them. Like they're still making them, but they're just. I don't know how much longer they keep making them for. But mm-hmm. that, yeah, I got a Pro Controller. I see that actually brings to mind. The first accessory I got was a Pro Controller. 
Th- this is something that, that I, I've seen some other people talk about. Um, backwards compatibility with controllers. You guys think they the said, Switch is going to pull that off? They said that they're not. I thought I thought they said they weren't going to do backwards compatibility. They said no backwards compatibility with games. Yeah, no I game. don't well, yeah, that's obvious. Controllers. It doesn't have... There's no dr- CD drive, so... Well, uh, does it count yeah, too for... Right. Da- well, the, does it count too for downloadable titles? You get off your Wii U virtual. Console? Well, what they oh, said for that, those. They, ca- they said physical media. Yeah, well, what they yeah, said that... for the the online games at one, I don't remember if I. This might have been a dream, and I might have been hallucinating this, but <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm on like a lot of cold medication right now. Um, we is, forgive you. Uh, thank you. Um, is that you can use one of the Joy-Con controllers as a pointer for like 3DS titles IR and stuff? Pointer, yeah, yeah. Is they that, were talking is that about they were thing? talking about that because um, there was there's a rumor out there that Nintendo is uh, like there, there's going to be like ten, like supposed a ten point multiple touch or something like that yeah. on the screen, uh, but obviously that's not really work. That's not going to work on a TV, and yeah. because Nintendo wants to ensure compatibility. They wanted. They want like everyone to make sure their games don't require a touch. second screen. Yeah. Um, but if you do want to have like a touch only feature, that one of the Joy-Con controllers can be an IR pointer. Um, okay. That that's uh, the supposed rumor. That so I wasn't like losing my mind there. No, you weren't losing my mind. That, that, that's like a recent thing. I think I just <laughs> okay. like, yesterday or something. <clears throat> yeah. Good. I'm not going. Um, obviously, we don't know if it, any of that's true, but. Um, it would be interesting for Nintendo to be able to, yeah, it's got touch, which, by the way, they don't show off at all in the reveal. Yeah. Um, it, I think they're trying to distance themselves from that. Yeah, I think it's one of those, like, yeah, it has it, but it's just kind of, like, they're kind of looking at it, they're trying to make it be like, yeah, that's just a feature, but, like, we, that's not a selling point. Like, well, it's, it's kind of like a standard for Nintendo consoles now. It's like, it looks like a tablet, so it can function mm-hmm. like a tablet, but that's not what we're talking about. That's not why you're It's got Microsoft it. Office on it. <laughs> <laughs> um... So one thing I do want to talk about with, with this, just briefly, is Nintendo target audience for this. Hmm. Um, they there's no kids or families of any kind in, in the reveal. Um, it's a bunch of twenty and thirty year olds playing games, um, mm-hmm. like playing you know what, what what they are trying to perceive or try to show off as AAA hardcore kind of gaming. Um, from Skyrim Remastered, obviously Breath of the Wild starting off with their high, most highly targeted game right now, uh, revealing what we believe to be a new Mario game, unless that was all just made up, and I doubt that entire thing yeah. was made up. And Splatoon and Mario Kart. Splatoon, Splatoon and Mario Kart, not just Splatoon and Mario Kart, but updated versions, mm-hmm. and Splatoon being shown off as an eSport. <clears throat> um, so, more than that, too, just kind of like a side note, does this mean, because we've already, we're seeing like a Splatoon redone um, with more features in it, and a Mario Kart with more characters, does this mean that we're going to see Super Smash Brothers with new characters in it? That's see, a possibility. I, 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 the only, my only pause with that is, you know, I, I went back and watched that footage over and over and over again. Um, Splatoon and Mario Kart look noticeably improved mm-hmm. visually over the Wii U versions of the game. Like, assuming that... Because that, the, the new rumors are saying that these are not, like, sequels. These are remasters, basically, mm-hmm. with new content and stuff. <clears throat> um, and that's great. I mean, that, that, that that's awesome. The, those games deserve to be in front of a bigger audience than they got on Wii U. And it, it's, it's one of those things where I wonder if Smash is at, even going to be one of those because... I don't see it really looking that much better comparatively. All, all you would really do is just add more stages and more characters. Well, and I and this, don't know that that I shows mind, off enough. Well, like, I, like it, it sounds like it's enough, but the at least with Splatoon and the Mario Kart they showed, like you could look at it and be like, okay, like this is, this is why you should own a Switch. Where you look at the stuff with like Smash coming over, we you owners just be like, well, why can't we have those characters in those stages? Yeah, what, I like, like, like it just feels like, like with Splatoon. Obviously, you could argue, you know, they should have those maps and everything, but the characters look different, customizable yeah. hair, you know, all the stuff that the, the Wii U can't do apparently for some reason. Well, maybe um, we'll see like an updated UI and updated system in general. Yeah, I just I don't know if Sakurai would do that. Yeah, you know, well, That's I don't know if Sakurai's like put it this way: there's not going to be new characters added to Smash unless Sakurai's working on it. 
Um, at least this this version of Smash. Yeah, um, we have no idea. You know, made- Sakurai's working on Smash Six. Yeah, well, he's we working don't... on something. He said he already knows what his next project is going to be. Yeah, whether and or I don't not think that's it's not Smash. Smash. I don't yeah. think it's Smash. Well, I think he's actually trying to get away from Smash. And now that, yeah. unfortunately, uh, Satoru Iwata has passed away, um, I don't think he feels like this big obligation like he has to keep making Smash Bros. Yeah. as a favor to, to Mr. Iwata anymore. Um, I don't or understand that. So it, it's one of those things where I think you're going to see that future Smash games might not have anything to do with Sakurai anymore. That'd be um, sad. Maybe he might be like an overseer, like kind of like Miyamoto, like Miyamoto for the for the yeah, franchise. Yeah, kind of plays the Miyamoto role. But yeah, I, I I think for this particular Smash game for Wii U and 3DS, um, I don't think he's doing any more work on it, and because he's not, he's not going to allow any more work to be done. Okay, that makes sense. Like like I think he's going to be like, look, like you're not <clears throat> releasing new characters on this unless I'm the one that fine tunes them, and I don't want to do that. If you want to make a new <laughs> Smash game, be my guest. And I think that might be why they didn't show it off, because I think maybe the thought is that's going to be the one game that doesn't come over because they're just going to make a new one. But it also n- makes, like like you said, that they you want to see Mario Kart and Splatoon have more exposure that they had on the Wii U. Sure. And Smash was a huge game, but it still was you know, limited to the Wii U audience, which is very small. Mm-hmm. 3DS. It had 3DS. Yeah, that's true. It, it is actually one of the <laughs> highest selling Smash games of all time. That's true. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's well, kind of the thing. Well, taking into account both. Where Splatoon, or... like, Splatoon and Mario Kart, you know, actually, Splatoon sold really well for a new IP, to be honest. It did. Especially on the Wii. Well, because the marketing was fantastic for it. Oh, it was great. That's and what happens great, when Nintendo great game. markets. And it's yeah. a great game. Like, the game almost markets itself because it's totally, like, that 90s kick, man. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's one of those where Smash for 3DS and Wii U actually did sell really, really well. They don't necessarily have to be like, oh, let's port the next one. I think fans of that series would be more excited about having a new Smash new, game yeah. that's you know exclusive to, to you know, I almost said NX there, exclusive <laughs> to the Switch. <laughs> See? It's gonna take a it's gonna take a long time to get used to saying Switch. Which, by the way, yeah. Exciting games aside, what do you guys think of the name? Mm. It's not. I think Wii. it's <laughs> fine. Well, see, Wii it's, was a brilliant name. <clears throat> Wii I, U I was a terrible name. <laughs> I n- never thought the Wii was a good title. I'm sorry. Just... Well, the reason it it marketed itself as a console for everyone to play, like as a family or as a group of friends. Exactly. So the Wii made sense, and yes. like the the Mies made sense, like that that name made sense, like it was natural. And the whole marketing for that was we would like to play with yeah. you, or we all would like to play. So that makes yep. sense. And the Wii U's name not didn't really hit that kind of marketing where it made sense. Like, I, I yeah, think... like we're trying to make a hardcore mm-hmm. gaming machine that you can play by yourself for you, but we don't want to give up the Wii branding. Yeah, it's, it was so weird. So here's Wii U. <laughs> Does anybody find it ironic that like their code names usually sound better than their actual names they come out with? <laughs> Well, I don't know. Right. Would you rather have had the GameCube or the Nintendo Dolphin? Oh no, no, like um, okay, I'm not, I'm not saying all. Oh, like, um, I think he's talking about like Revolution. Yeah, 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 yeah like the Revolution. Well, here's the thing. The I don't NX. think. I I think um. I think as as like a, a like a hardcore Nintendo fan, obviously, uh, that I I love a lot of the code names that Nintendo has had, and I wouldn't care if the systems were called that. Like Alpha just said, you know, GameCube Dolphin. I don't care. Both the same in my book. Um, yeah. I mean, GameCube is literally describing it's a cube that plays games. <laughs> um, but Dolphin, to me, just sounds badass. And just like, you know, Revolution to Wii, Revolution to me sounds completely badass. But Wii actually makes sense for what the system is. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like Revolution appeals to me, but Wii wasn't trying to appeal to me. So, like, it, it kind of... Wii was trying to appeal to my mom. It was trying to appeal to my sister. It was, it was trying, trying to appeal to, appeal to, to people. It was trying to basically appeal to people who don't play games. Um, at a time when smart devices weren't even a thing yet, yeah. So like, and it people, succeeded. Yeah, and and it worked. Like like as much as you can. I know Kristen really doesn't like that Wii name. Well, that's the thing. It wasn't for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they weren't trying to market it to you. They were trying to market it to the hundred million other people who bought it. And it worked. Like that was a successful. Yeah, that was market. great. I mean, granted, it, you know, <laughs> it was mostly in, within a three year run, but. It was a brilliant three-year. Oh, run. they yeah, they made tons of money off the Wii, yeah. and I think that they could do that with the Switch because the Switch, I, it's a weird name to me. Like it's it makes sense. I just think it's kind of weird. Yeah, you know, the Switch to me, the, there's a couple things with it. One, I, I almost like it to the GameCube. The GameCube was a literal literal description. Of, <laughs> it's a cube that plays games. Yeah, like it's if you think about it, it's really not that clever of a name. It's it's <laughs> it's literal. It's stupid. 
but no one really called it GameCube. I mean, we we even, all just called it a GCN. Well, which even then, made no sense because it was the Nintendo GameCube, so it should have been the NGC. <laughs> Everyone called well, even, it a GCN. Even if you think about a lot of the consoles, they don't like the names themselves don't make sense, or they make sense because they're literal. Like the PlayStation, it's a station for gaming, or the Xbox, it's a box with an X on it. Like, <laughs> these, well, it's a it, it's a, it, it, the X, I guess, was something to do with like extreme box. Yeah, like, it was. It no, was no, a hardcore I, Garrett gamer thing. Um, I, I feel when, like I'm one of the only on ones that actually cool. really likes the Switch name. Um, oh, I know a lot of people said they should have just stuck with NX, but I feel like the X thing has been done. Xbox. I think. I think if they would have, what, what would have maybe been a natural natural choice if they wanted to build off the NX is because the X means cross in Japan, just call it the Nintendo Cross. But yeah, but like but again, I, I we, think. I, I think here's the thing. I, I don't. I'm not exactly thrilled by the Switch name. As I said, it's gonna take me a long time to start calling it a Switch because, in specific, because it's not nearly as clever as like Wii was. However, mm-hmm. I think they went with the name Switch because of how bad the Wii U branding was. I think it's a literal reaction to Wii U tells people nothing. We need to put out a name that explains exactly what this thing is, and we can't can, be creative like we did with the Wii, where we were, we made up a word and it works. Like, well, like we it, can't do that again. Right there's now. Switch, it's a switch. Works. You, you can like switch works. Yeah. Like the TV people or... are gonna go to the store and be like, Nintendo Switch. Oh, look at that on the box. There's a guy playing it, and then he sticks it on the dock. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes and even sense. then, if in like a more metaphorical sense, I don't. This may not be true, but it, you can even take it as a switch from the old Nintendo. Oh yeah. If you wanted to go so totally. far, um, like. And I think maybe one of the other reasons why they didn't stick with NX, because the NX could have been the final name for the console. But like we said, and like has been said in the past, the only person that knew what NX meant was Satoru Iwata. Yeah, and he didn't tell anyone. Yeah, he didn't tell anyone. So that could have been the intended name for this console, but unfortunately he passed. So we, we didn't know what it was or didn't know what it meant. Mm-hmm. And maybe it meant something like Nintendo Cross or whatever, but we, we'll never know. And it's one sure. of those mysteries that we'll never have solved. Um so it, it's it like you said it makes sense it's a good name. it's just kind of weird yeah because it's an unconventional name so i'm gonna kind of flip the script because i, I want to get to our fan topics and it, it's no surprise I, I don't think there's a single fan topic this week that isn't about the switch <laughs> so we're talking about the switch so we might as well let the fans give us stuff to talk about um you know and, and then you know maybe t- after we're done going over this stuff we'll kind of give a general like are we excited for it kind of thing because obviously none of us have really stated if we like it or not um so the first fan topic comes from twitter from uh at baff ribberger <laughs> ben freeberger is is the, the name that he has on the account um he says do you believe nintendo will have enough hardware ready to roll on release of the switch on launch day to actually ensure everyone can have one yes yeah no you don't, I don't think so no? i think they learned their mistake with the wii no, the Wii worked. No, but Wii like worked, that, baby. No, it, but they they sold out of that. It was a pain in the butt to get a Wii. But that's the point. It worked. It so, made people want it because they couldn't get it. From what I've seen, okay, from what I've seen of the trailer, from what I've seen of the game, from what I've seen the list of developers, this is literally their biggest investment, and I think they're gonna put everything they got into this one. So I think they're gonna be ready hardware wise. Well, see, I, I, my gut reaction was to say yes, but there was a report that just came out, too, that they're already sold out of the NES Minis, like, everywhere. You can't pre-order yeah. it anymore. They're sold out. Yep. Yeah, but that's, that's the NES Mini. No, We're yeah, talking about true. a brand new console. Here. I know, yeah. but still, like, if Nintendo isn't shipping out or, well, like, let's, promising... Let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. The Wii U, right? It, it's a relatively, like, it, it did not sell well. No. no it At launch, it was still hard to get one. Really? Uh, at my Walmart, I waited in line um, at like 6. I, was, I got there at 6 p.m. I was the first person in line waiting for it. The sales guy had no idea what I, what I was even talking about when I said I'm waiting in line for the Wii U. He didn't even know what the Wii U was. Um, it, it wasn't until a manager showed up like, oh, yeah, that new Nintendo console that we can't release until midnight because, you know, they already had the units. And he's like, so there was like a group of like 30 of us waiting. And then he comes out and he's like, so we only have five Wii U units. What? <laughs> yeah, and we didn't have that unless you here. pre-ordered and you go to, over to the, you know, this back area where you can pick up your pre-order of it. Uh, we only have five that we're putting on shelves, and there's like 30 people <clears> waiting. <throat> they're not going to get it, and that was uh, that was true at the Best Buy. That was true at my other, at the other Walmart, a town over, uh, and GameStop. The whole reason I wasn't at GameStop is they were sold out 
or like they pre-ordered every single unit they had out. Um, so like, at least That's in my area, really weird. you could not walk into a store week one and buy a Wii U unless you were waiting in line. At they lunch. they were everywhere in Texas, or at least in the Dallas area. In like, the Dallas you, area, yeah. You could and, find and, and from what I everywhere. what I remember. Because I came online and I was like talking about how hard it was to get. So people say, "Oh, it's not that hard in my area." And, and I think it was just kind of a by region, yeah thing. I think Nintendo oversupplied <clears throat> some regions and undersupplied others, um, or it could just be the retailers under order because they yeah. didn't think it would sell. Uh, but yeah, I, I think <clears throat> with this system, I think one, it's going to generate somehow. Even though it's probably not getting any major news about it till January, um, mm-hmm. it's going to end up being more hype than the Wii U was. Because the message, as long as they stick stick with the current messaging, if they come out in January and they start showing, you know, kids running outside and, and playing, you know, their little Splatoon in the backyard and then coming inside and getting their mom and dad in on it and they start throwing Wii Sports on the screen or something like, okay, you're going to totally lose all the momentum you built. Well, what um, if this is just like, you, you brought that up, playing Splatoon outside. Yeah. What if they make Splatoon like an augmented reality game, like with a camera in the back and you're like fighting each other? <laughs> I don't know why I thought about that. I just you brought oh, that up. Reality. <laughs> and it's just like a bunch of they, kids they might running as well around. They just release a full Splatoon. VR headset for the thing. Call it, call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but, like I don't, I don't think. I mean, I hate the idea of artificial um, inf- not inflation. I guess no, that's not the word I'm looking for. Artificial demand. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like what they did with the amiibo. Like, oh well, here's well, here's these amiibo that you okay. can only... to 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 be completely <clears throat> fair for the amiibo. They didn't I think it was going to be that popular. Yeah, Nintendo I don't think they thought it was going to be that big. not expect those sales. Like, that was the, their first major toy push since they really became um, a video game company. Uh, yeah. And it, it's kind of like they did not think it was going to blow up like that. But, I mean, even with, like, Wave 3 and Wave 2, like, after seeing... Especially when, I think at the time Amiibo launched, I don't think the 3DS could even use them yet. It couldn't. Not... It didn't have so, the NFC connector on it. Yeah, no, yeah, it wasn't until the new 3DS came out. So it was like... You know, they obviously, you know, looked at Wii U sales and said, well, yeah, we might sell a few million, but, like, no one owns a Wii U, so who's going to buy these things? Oh, but, I mean, even after Wave 1 and Wave 2, they still had, like, a very short supply of Wave 3 Amiibos. And this is coming from someone that doesn't collect them religiously, but still collects <laughs> them when I can that are, right, like, rare right, ones. Yeah. Is I I didn't... I mean, I under, kind of understand that, because it's kind of like with Pokemon cards, okay? You want to have some that are rare, that are really hard to find, that people are sure. willing to pay a lot more for, sure. or you want to have, like... Especially if you want to push it as a collectible. Yeah, like, you're pushing it as a collectible, like, you know, I still have my first-gen, first-edition Charizard, and I'm like, you're not going to find that in very many packs, and you are certainly not going to find that back then. That was just a lucky thing that I got, and I was... Luckily, and if you are going to find it in a pack, it's going to be because you bought an unopened box of Gen 1 cards and you probably paid like thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah. Because well, like if that. you got a box of... Because if you get like a whole box of unopened unopened packs, dude, you might have thousands and thousands of dollars worth of rare cards. Yeah. Like, or you might have nothing. And so that's kind of like the same thing. Like I so. can kind of understand why they'd want to have some that are more rare than others and even have some that are exclusive. Like sure. Dark Pit was exclusive to Best Buy and I really regret not picking that up when I had the chance. <laughs> um, but... I just don't like the idea of like an artificial demand for a sure. for a system. But but I, I think what's going to happen is there's going to be two things. One, Nintendo would love to repeat the Wii situation because the Wii not only stayed sold out for almost a full year, um, like every unit they sent sold. That's mm-hmm. a good problem for Nintendo to have, whether it was intentional or not, because that means yeah. people want their system faster than they can make it. That's that's good news for Nintendo. Bad news for people who you know didn't get a pre-order in like that sucks that you got to keep like hawkeyeing websites to find out when things are available and all that stuff like that's no that's no fun no no consumer likes that but the fact that consumers are willing to do that tells you the demand is high so i would love to see the demand be that high well do i think it's going to be that quite that high no i think what's going to happen at launch is it's going to be where um because i think a lot of analysts are predicting like eight million sales in the first year or something like eight between eight and ten somewhere in there in the first year yeah ten million in the first year um and you know that that might that might be you know, that, that might be attainable, especially if they announce any sort of handheld games for it, um, like a po- a new Pokemon game or something like that. That would really really drive sales for it as a handheld. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully, if they do a Pokemon game, it's going to be a home console version and a handheld. Well, version. that's that's the hope. But I, <laughs> we'll see. I know, I know, um, I, I know where you're coming. I know. From. Uh, and plus, they plan to run the 3DS like, through 2018. Well, plus I, we're also getting Sun and Moon like at the tail end of this year. Yes. So I, I have no idea what, what they are 
planning to do because right now they are pushing this is a home console like they aren't even hinting at mobile anything like it's a home console games. that you can take on the go yeah what it's a way for you to play your triple a home console games on the go i i I don't know how they could release another handheld to compete alongside it to replace the 3DS, but this is Nintendo, so they could just do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, just like, you know, part of me says, oh, in like two years, they're going to release just a, a plain old set-top box, too, but then w- that kind of defeats the purpose of the Switch, so like, do they do that? Do they release a dock that lets you upgrade it? You know, like, what are they going to do after the Switch? Um <clears throat> But that's a conversation to have once the Switch actually comes out. That's uh, that is true. I I just think mm. at launch Nintendo is going to under anticipate how many people are going to want it at launch. They're going to assume that people aren't really going di- to buy into this big thing until the holiday season. Yeah. Until they get past their first E three with it and they get into their first holiday, I, I think they're they're going to plan like okay we're going to sell like two million units. During launch oh, week, oh, launch, and I yeah. think that's what they're looking at. And I think demand, especially with Breath of the Wild, at the if especially if they bundle Breath of the Wild in, which I don't think they're going to do. But if, if they, they do did, pre-order that console, like just as like, soon as con- if they, possible. I don't even care if it's not a special edition. Like if it's just if they just bundle it in, that's I- I'm sorry, you're probably moving four million units week one, or could move four million, and I don't think they're going to have that many on store shelves. Uh, my my worry, and this happens all the time, especially with Nintendo stuff, like with Amiibo, is that if you don't pre-order it, you're going to end up having scalpers. Oh, well, yeah, and, the, it, and like, that too. And the thing is, that happened with the Wii U as well. Yeah. Um, you know, as, as easy as it was for you to find in that area, all the online stores were sold out. So it, it's kind of like there was artificial demand during that first week for the Wii U. Um, and I even remember Nintendo reporting that like the Wii U was selling really, really well during the first week, mm-hmm. and then it just dropped off. Well, I think that was that was a bigger problem with the Wii, toward the point that I remember. 3DS was like that too, actually. Yeah, but I remember that like when I this was around the Christmas season when Nintendo released the Wii, at least from what I remember, sure. it was towards the holiday. Um, there were stores that were saying you could only buy one per family, yeah. and like they made that as clear as possible. There were people waiting in line at 6 a.m. like every day to buy that thing. I still mm-hmm. don't know how my parents got me one. Like, I, I, it's a mystery to this day. Because <laughs> um, I got it, like, during the holiday, I got it for Christmas. That's and crazy. I'm just so yeah, lucky. confused. Lucky. Yeah, I know. Um, <clears throat> so, moving on to the next fan topic. Uh, this comes from Facebook. Mohamed Faiz Maud Yunus. I think that's the end of his name. <laughs> yes, because the next word is a, is a word that starts a sentence. Uh, it says, should I get a <laughs> oh Switch? Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> like, people have, like, four names. The thing is, like, I have four names. I'm Nathaniel David Rumpel Jans. But, like, to me, that feels uncommon. I don't know. I'm an American. You guys can kill me later. <laughs> I'm sure four names is common in other parts of the country. Or other parts of the other parts of the world. Heck, probably other parts of this country. I don't know. Um, just, I'm just proud to be an American where I get everyone's <laughs> names wrong. Just read the question. Um, should I get a Switch if I already own yes. a Wii U? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. I'm going to say... Yes. I'm going to say wait. <clears throat> and yes. I'm going to say it for no. the same reasons yeah. that if you listen to the Nintendo Prime podcast, you heard when, when I talked about um, whether or not Eric was going to get it at launch. Basically, if you get a launch unit and it does not have a game you think is worth the money for that unit at launch to buy, do not buy a launch unit. You are being an idiot. You are one of those people that are going to buy the system on promises, and if they never fulfill games that you want to play, you're going to be pissed off later. Hashtag oh, you. I, I was talking to Nate about this a couple of days ago when, when the Switch was first revealed, and you know, everyone was asking, well, what do you think? I'm like, well, my usual rule for a new console is, oh, wait, I, I said yes, but I agree with Nate, wait, because my rule is <clears throat> it has to have at least three to four games I would want for it. I would See, want it's, all, to it's all about the games, baby. Like, for yeah. me... PlayStation 4, I don't own one. I know I'm going to own one someday. When The Last Guardian comes out. In the That's summer. all I need. Hopefully. I don't need it. <laughs> well, yeah. the thing, like, I don't need any of the People are excited about Kingdom Hearts 3. People love Uncharted. People are, you know, Bloodborne, all this stuff. Like, I don't care about this. man But see, I'm also of the old school mentality that it only, like, Nintendo used to always say it only takes one game to sell a system. And that's what worked with the Wii. I mean, to be honest, as popular as Twilight Princess and everything was, Wii Sports is what really got that thing I think going. that was, like, the highest selling game of the Wii. Yeah, it was. Like, easily. Yeah, it wasn't even close. Um, it's one of the highest selling games of all time. Yeah. Across all of the games. It might even be the highest. Well, I mean, Look that up while you're talking. I, I, I gotta let, yeah. I mean, Minecraft has gotta be way up there, too. 
it's all the platforms this time. But um, it's one of those things where I just look at the culmination of buying a system at launch because I bought a, I got a Wii U at launch. I explained I waited. Until, I didn't get a 3DS right away at launch, uh, but I got it like a few weeks later. It's one of those. If you want to avoid buyer's remorse, you want to avoid being disappointed in the system. Um, there's multiple reasons to win. <clears throat> One, if you are buying into the hype of the system, but then you get it and the features end up not being that impressive to you, that's something that you will find out if you're not part of the launch group because reviews are going to come out, customer reviews will come out and let you know if the things you're you're excited about are actually all that in a bag of chips. Well, and um, if, if, you're, if your main driving point for the console, like for me personally... All I need is Breath of the Wild for that first for to yeah, buy it on launch day. Exactly. That's not That's everybody's case. And, and the thing is, the thing is, <clears throat> is if Breath of the Wild, like you can even look at it. Oh, Breath of the Wild's why I'm gonna get it. Well, you if you already own a Wii U, you're gonna get Breath of the Wild for a Wii U. You don't have to buy yeah. the system to play that game. Um, but if you want like so, a new Mario, so Breath of the Wild might not even be a selling point for you. Well, so it's, it's, it's kind of by Breath of the Wild is person a selling to person point for me basis. because you can take it on the go and it'll look better. Well, yeah, the, to me the we, driving we, point we is assume it will look better. Well, we've been Nintendo said we've been there will be visual it's enhancements. Nintendo play better. also said that the Wii U would have an unprecedented partnership with EA. <laughs> well, <that's for> sure. <laughs> so let's just, still, let's just the the be, being able to take it on the go is a selling point for me. For you, yeah, it, it, they, it's one of the yeah. What's up? In reference to your earlier statement. Sure. The number one selling game of all time is Tetris with 100 million copies. Mm-hmm. Um, Wii Sports was 82.69 million, so it's the second best selling game of all time, there followed by Minecraft, which is like 70 million copies. And, and you know, Tetris is like an all time king for games. Yeah. So. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, well, it's also on like every platform known to man. Yeah. Well, and it was even <laughs> huge back on. You know, I think it was the one of the big things that sold the Game Boy back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, so. It's it's just one of those things where uh, you really sh- don't want to be part of the early adopter culture because uh, most people that buy launch consoles are We're buying great. it just to say they have it and they want to brag to their friends who don't. Um, like when I bought now, it, like when now, 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 I, as I said, that doesn't mean you should not buy it at launch. Like for you and in, in Muhammad, you talk about you know you already own a Wii U. Should I get a Switch? Well, the Switch is going to be Nintendo's home console replacement for Wii U. That is very very clear in their messaging. It's probably going to replace the 3DS eventually as well, but they are definitely advertising it as a home console. So it is going to be like the next Wii U. If you're looking for their next home console, this is it. So you could look at it as, I'm going to buy it on the promise of things. But see, if I had done that for the PlayStation 4, I would have regretted my purchase so far. Mm -hmm. Because they promised The Last Guardian... But it is it. specific to person to person. So what you are excited for, man, yeah. someone else. So is. so I can't tell you if you should get one. In fact, you shouldn't even be able to tell yourself if you can get one. I can tell you I'm going to get one, not even because of Breath of the Wild, because we technically don't know if Breath of the Wild is a launch game. That has not even yeah. been confirmed. It's not even confirmed it's coming out in March. So we don't even know if Breath of the Wild is going to be there at launch. We just assume it is. We hope. We hope, but we don't know. So I, it's kind of one of those. The only reason I'm going to get it is because at launches, I work at Zelda Informer. <clears throat> we cover stuff about this console. I, work, I, I run a site called Nintendo Prime, so I'm an enthusiast. I'm going to get it because I really want it so I can do proper coverage of it and live streams and all that stuff for the places I work. So I, I'm, I'm like, I feel obligated to get it, basically. Here's, here's my... Listen, these are Alfred's two-step rules to buying something, okay? <laughs> I tell this to everyone I go shopping with. If we go to, like, GameStop or Hot Topic, these are the two things that I ask Do you ask want them. it? Can you afford it? <laughs> yes. Well, that and most... Instead of that, it's can you afford it and will you regret it if you buy it? If you can answer yes and no, then you can get it. Because if you can afford it, then sure. If you were going to regret but it, I, then I think it's don't. one of those... And this is where I look at the launch of any new technology, even like new iPhones and also like I could have an iPhone 7 right now, but, you know, it's not so much do I know if I'm going to regret I don't know if I'm going to regret the purchase. I don't know if anyone can know if they're going to regret it. Life. No one buys something thinking I'm going to regret this purchase. Well, like in, in this point, if you if you're gonna if you can afford it, but you're going to regret spending three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars, you can. Spend well, that's on something different else. because then yeah. you know, can you really mm-hmm. afford it if you're going to regret spending the money? I mean, I can afford a switch right now, but will I probably regret buying it later when I can't eat food? Yeah. Well, then that's that. But see, that brings on the question: but then you really can't afford it. You're that's sacrificing true. something in the future to be able to get it. 
like uh, to me, like saying you can be able to afford it means no no part of your life is going to be That's detrimentally true. affected by buying this product. Even if it sucks and you end up hating it, it doesn't change whether you can eat, whether you have clothes, whether you can go to a movie next week with your girlfriend. Hopefully, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, like it shouldn't. Um, and, and I think part of that that also helps is the only benefit of pre order culture is going to like a GameStop, and I know a lot of people hate GameStop, but it's just a really good example of this where you could just pay it off over time. You don't have to have four hundred dollars just to spend. You could be like, "Look, I got twenty bucks this week. I got forty bucks, and I get paid extra. I could throw at it." Well, and like, even then, you could pull out the pre-order if you. Yeah, and you could pull it out. That's true. Like you could have it all paid off, and before it comes out, you could be like, "Oh man, I really need that four hundred to pay rent." To so pull it out, like you know, there's no, like that's what's nice about pre-orders. Like even though you have the pre-order fully paid off at like a GameStop. You don't actually have to give them your money. You can get it right back. In fact, there was someone, uh, funnily enough, I remember reading a, a NeoGAF thread yep. about this, I know where uh, going who was this. using GameStop as a bank. Yep. <laughs> like, they were pre-ordering <laughs> games and, like, paying them off and then pulling their money out before the game got then switching it off to different games. Like, um, you pre-order, like, 10, 20 games at a time and then, like, use like it just, to keep his money? Yeah, he'll, he'll just move the pre-orders around so yeah. he never actually buys the games, and then he'll pull <laughs> the money out when he needs it. Um, wow. But it's funny because that's exactly what GameStop and a lot of places that allow that kind of stuff, like that's how they work. Um, well, and it know, it's very them. rare that you're going to use it as a bank. I'm not saying go use GameStop as a bank. But. Well, and that doesn't hurt GameStop then with that case because those people make money off of the commissions of the pre-order sales. So yeah. technically everybody wins. Nobody's losing except the CEO. Except the CEO. <laughs> and GameStop makes enough money, so it's okay. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, well, here's here's where I'm coming from. Sure. I said like yes five times when the question <laughs> happened, but be- before the question was even over, I'm like yes because here's where I'm coming from. The system is confirmed to have yes, I'm a fanboy. That's that's it. I think we all but are. this this system is confirmed to have Breath of the Wild. That's enough for me. Yes, it's going to come out on Wii U, but Nintendo said it's going to have visual enhancements. But even if it doesn't. I can take it on the go, which is will be amazing. Well, what so if that's it, what one if it ends up being like a Twilight Princess? And I know this is still considered a technically an opinion, but it's widely be- <laughs> believed that the GameCube version of Twilight Princess is the superior of the two versions. You're, you're not wrong. That's so a like, fact. Well, I know. And, and like, it's, I know on this podcast, I'm not probably going to get anyone who disagrees with that. But it, it's one of those, what if you're like, yeah, it looks better, but it actually plays better on Wii U. I, I don't know I, if anything would The fact would play of being able to take it on the go instead of being confined to my house is will make we'll, me we'll overlook trump, that. Will we'll trump the fact that it might actually play better. Because and yeah. the only reason I bring that up because this game Breath of the Wild spent most of its development on the, on the Wii U. So there's a high chance that even though it might look better, it doesn't port as well. So then it actually ends up running like FPS and everything better gameplay wise on the Wii U than this console despite the extra power because the Wii U architecture and the architecture for this thing are two totally different things. Thankfully. Well, thankfully for the future, but bad if you like your Wii U games and just want... Like, unless unless they are building it, it with a structure for the NX. Like, cause I, I, I doubt it. Yeah, I highly I doubt it. But I, I think what, what they're doing with <laughs> this system is trying to set up a future family of systems that continues this current direction of architecture. Yeah. Rather than, well, anyways. rather than being like, yeah, because Nintendo's always had this problem with their systems that they keep changing up the architecture every time, and that's why you don't... Well, they do that with that everything one. they do, except yeah. for, like, Mario games. And and I think they're seeing that that's not how things are done anymore out there. Yeah. That's not, like, yeah, it sucks that you may, maybe, like, then like uh, if, say you're on, you're on the virtual console on the system, and you buy A Link to the Past off the virtual console, it sucks for Nintendo being like, oh, well, we're not going to get another sale of A Link to the Past on these line of consoles in the future, because we're going to let them carry over their purchase. But, at the same time, that also helps you retain customers to buy your new <clears> games. <throat> yeah. So, it, it's kind of a trade-off where you gain more customers staying loyal to you, versus customers that just keep getting frustrated. they got to keep spending five bucks on the stupid game every generation. And well, it's not I'm, stupid. It's just they they don't want to keep their old systems hooked up to play those games. Well, plus that, and this is the same problem that they kind of ha- that they have with the Zelda series is that every time they use a brand new architecture, a brand new structure, a brand new uh, system to build it, they have to start from scratch, which takes oh, yeah. them a longer development period. Whereas oh. if you something like the Sony like Sony consoles and and Xbox consoles, they build off of their previous architectures, yeah. and that lets them not necessarily release it like. You know, one year, two year, three year, like a, a Call of Duty game, but they have the 
option to have a shorter development window. Or oh. they have the option to spend more time on other things so that they don't have to redevelop a completely new architecture and a completely new system yep. and UI and all that stuff. So Well, anyways, yeah. as I was saying... Yeah. Totally. Go- <laughs> um, tore Darren apart. <laughs> <laughs> Breath of the Wild on the go trumps the fact that even if it did run like crap and it ran good on sure. Wii U, that, that trumps the fact. Um, but I'm a Nintendo fanboy, and I'm going to want to play that new Mario game, even if in, if it isn't what we saw mm-hmm. in the trailer, because we didn't see you're much. You're going to want to play it anyways, regardless. I'm going to want to play that new Mario game. Player. I'm going to want to play that Mario Kart well, 8 it, Plus, it, because it, I bought the crap out of Mario Kart 8 and its DLC, I, I and think, I wish I had more I think more an answer DLC. to this is... If you bought the Wii U to play an exclusive Zelda game, you never got that. Mm -hmm. So you could be heavily disappointed that you spent money on a Wii U when that game is going to be on the next system, and that next system might get the exclusives of the game, too. I know, and Nate probably knows who I'm talking about, an old staff member who is gone now, um, who bought his Wii U to play Zelda, and when it was announced that Zelda was being delayed, he basically said, well, I'm going to throw my Wii U at the window now because it's definitely going to Nintendo's next console. So if you bought a Wii U like him to play an exclusive Zelda game, you're screwed. Well, and that's kind of my point with buying this system is don't buy it based on what you think is going to happen or what promises are made. Because as an example, the PlayStation 4, and I'm not saying people that own it regret it. There are some that do own it and regret it, but... Um, for me, I didn't buy it because, not because I don't want it. There's games like, coming out in the future I want to play on it, but those games haven't arrived, and they've been talking about these games since they announced the console in 2013. They have been literally selling their console on hype rather than on actual games coming out. Now, granted, they have had some games come out now. They've had Uncharted 4. They have Bloodborne. But... What else is there besides had, uh, No Man's Sky? No Man's Sky that was a total flop. Well, they have, they've <laughs> had, whether or not the games have been good, because I'm in the camp of people that thinks Infamous Second Son was an abomination to the franchise. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I think it's just okay. It's all right. I played I, it. It's all right. I, I don't I, think it stands up to the first at all. Listen, oh, no. I, I love Troy Baker. Like, if <laughs> I would, I would be gay for Troy Baker. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> oh but that was the oh whiniest gosh. character. In yeah. any game ever, and that I just hated him as a character. The gameplay was eh. It was just an an egg eh game, yeah. and Sony for each of those though, Sony's had like Uncharted Four, and they've had um, like you know even going back to the PS3, they had Infamous, they had Sly Cooper. But but, had... but look at this. You, you just <laughs> mentioned one PlayStation Four game, and it, we are in year three. Okay, well. There's Uncharted 4, there's Little Big Planet 3. Um, you could even count some third Little parties. Little Big Planet 3 was on PlayStation 3. That was, but it was it was infinitely better on the 4. It doesn't matter. It was on 3. Eh. Well, like, I, I'm not trying to like discredit mm-hmm. it. It's not an exclusive game for PlayStation 4. It's I, not a reason to buy PlayStation um, But, I mean, like you even have some of the third parties on it. and like I'm, Well, third I'm parties saying, also on the Xbox One. I know. But I'm not saying that... Like I said earlier about buying the NX yeah. at launch... Is it's going to be different for person to person. Don't buy it because exactly. we tell you to buy it. Buy it because you know if you look at it and you honestly believe that, like like Darren and like I myself, that it, the Breath of the Wild is going to be better on the NX for one reason or another, and that's the reason why you want it, then get it. Like I didn't buy my Wii U with hopes of an expectation for a Zelda game. I bought it because of Zelda or Wind Waker HD um, for yeah. Smash Bros. Well, what, what, what I'm kind of mm-hmm. what, what I was kind of getting at for you, Muhammad. Is one, we can't answer the question of if you should buy it or not. Like, we can't answer that for anybody outside of people that have the exact same reasoning that we do to want to buy it. Like, for me, I'm obligated to buy it. Plus, I'd want to buy it, like, even without any sort of other other factors. Say I didn't work at Zelda Informer anymore. I had no Nintendo Prime. I had no internet persona or anything. And all I was working on was just me being a fan. I'd buy it because I love Zelda. And I'm going to play Breath of the Wild on that and on Wii U. And I want to compare it for myself. Yeah. So that's going to make me want to buy it. Assuming that it comes out at launch. Now, obviously, if Breath of the Wild doesn't come out at launch, I wouldn't necessarily buy a launch unit. Um, unless it was coming out like a week or two after launch. Then I might just to make sure it's not sold out. So I don't have to like 
you know, Hawkeye places for it to come back <clears> in stock. <throat> but again, that still gives me a specific purpose to buy it as a fan. Um, for you, it's all about what you want. Um, as Alfred just expertly explained with his Wii U, he didn't buy it for the promise of a new Zelda game. He bought it for games that were already out. That's what you should be buying the system for. Don't buy it on promises. Buy it on what's already there. And if at launch it has stuff there you already feel makes the console worth it to you, then buy it. For Darren, mm-hmm. Breath of the Wild is worth it, period, done, end of story. There might never be another game released on it. It doesn't matter. It's still <laughs> worth it to him. I mean, he knows yeah. there's going to be more games. But, but reality reality yeah. is, like, you should never, like, don't buy things based on promises. Buy it based on results. Mm-hmm. And we don't know what's happening with this console. We don't Put know what's coming at launch. Sticker. So wait until, basically wait to, t- to have this conversation. In fact, we should wait to have this conversation un- until January when they're <clears> probably going to have a direct that's going to actually explain launch titles, launch window, price, specs, everything you need to know about the system to make a purchasing decision. And then we can really bring this conversation yeah. back around, hey, you own a Wii U. Should you upgrade at launch? Yeah. Because right it, now, we honestly don't know enough. We just know the concept of what this thing is. And it, again, like it does follow the personal preferences. Like, Darren's going to get one. I'm inevitably going to get one. Like, probably at launch. Like, that's yeah. just... Uh, and I'm going to go into launch because I'm obligated to. Part of me wants to. I'm a fanboy. But it, it's also kind of... I, I get it. Like, I can't tell you to get it. Mm-hmm. You, we should just wait till we have more information. And then if you like what you're hearing, if you like, oh, it's Breath of the Wild at launch with Mario the next month, and then it's going to have Splatoon, <clears> like, two weeks after launch. Like, if that's enough for you to buy it then do it It, it's just let's wait until we know what's going to be on the system be an informed buyer like make sure that you know what you're gonna buy don't be a stupid fanboy like some of us we're just gonna buy it because we think it's gonna be Be informed zelda informed informed. Yeah. yeah make an informed purchase okay and we can't inform you yet because the information's not available we can make up information to finally finish my point i mentioned breath of the wild and mario with my Wii U right now, I'm not going to be able to play future home console Nintendo games. With the Switch, <laughs> I will. And because I'm the biggest Nintendo fanboy around, I Ooh, am going to want to play that. those future games. I'm okay, not saying I'm that because I mean, I just know some I, really, really big Nintendo I'd drop my mic okay. if I didn't want to break it. <laughs> I, I am a big Nintendo oh, fan. Oh, Alfred's boy. ready to throw a fit over there. Oh, you want to challenge my <laughs> fandom? You throw As down? I mentioned earlier, so I'm going to want to play those future games. Yep. Even if those future games are crap, I'm going to want to <laughs> see that they're crap for myself. Yep. So, Understandable. Understandable. That's just my sad predicament. Um, you can make fun of me. Um, but make so, the decision for yourself. It's a personal yeah, one. Yeah, th- thank you, Mohammed, for the question. You know, Maybe that's a topic <laughs> we'll revisit once we have a, a direct or something where they actually announce specifics because we don't know anything. We have a commercial. Um, it's still moving on to the thing. next fan topic. Uh, this this is kind of this, this kind of talks about games. So, uh, Stefan Waffi from our Facebook page uh, wants to know uh, which other games apart from Smash, which by the way Smash is not confirmed, yeah. uh, Mario Kart and Splatoon deserve getting an enhanced port for the Switch. So okay. I'm assuming he's talk, talking about Wii U games, obviously. Breath of the Wild, Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> Hi- Hyrule Warriors is a good one. I have one game. That I want to see, either an a- or two games, either an HD remix. Ten bucks says that it is um, or a sequel. I can't even think of it. Why did I say that? It's the it's the Nordic game. No, I don't want. I I love Darksiders, but that's not what I'm thinking. Of. Yes, Darksiders. There's. Oh, okay. I, I thought for sure you were gonna say Darksiders. I too. want like more than anything for there to be a Paper Mario Thousand Year Door HD remix. I know that's a pipe dream. It's probably never gonna happen, but I want to see like. Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door in HD, on the NX. That would be glorious. Just so, look at how good um, Paper Mario Color Splash looks. Is great. If they applied that to Thousand Year Door, it'd be fantastic. Yeah. Also, that, that'd be a game to buy. I want either an HD version or a proper sequel to Luigi's Mansion. Oh hell I, yeah! I loved the first one. It's one. Of, it's probably my favorite game of all time. I. You don't. I can't answer you why. Like okay. I can't say it's got great story. It's got great graphics. It's just my favorite game of all time. I play that through at least four times a year. Okay. Um, and the Dark Moon for me, I have the same problem with Dark Moon that I do with Color Splash. Is it lacks the character that the original had, and mm. I, like there wasn't, there weren't any portrait ghosts. Like each ghost didn't have their own personality to it. The boss battles were eh, 
to Luigi. It was still a good game. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Dark Moon was a terrible game. It just wasn't what I wanted out of the Luigi's Mansion wanted. sequel. Okay. It didn't have the character for it, and neither catered Alfred. Yeah, carried on me. I know everything. So just, <laughs> just I'm I speak for every Nintendo fan. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but it's kind of the same. Now thing. get out your. We, we are all free to have our pipe dreams. <laughs> yeah, and it's you, it's kind of. <laughs> it's the same thing with why some people didn't like Color Splash is that there, you know, it was just Toads. There really weren't any other characters in the game like there were in the past games. But those are the two things that I really want to see. Whether I think we'll get them or not is a completely different story because I actually don't think we will. But I think that those games, like, because we heard a rumor a while back that we were going to get a Luigi's Mansion game as a launch title. I know that's just a rumor, but that put hope in my heart. And then there was a like Darren said, I do want to see Darksiders 3, which would be a great launch <laughs> title. But in terms of Wii U games, getting a proper, like, either remake or sequel, I, I really don't know if I could think of any except Hyrule Warriors, like Kristen said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's... I, I look at it like this. There's what I want and what probably should happen yeah. and is likely to happen. Uh, the Wii U didn't sell well. So basically, any Wii U exclusive game. And I don't mean... I, I mean games that are going to show noticeable differences. So like Tropical Freeze, probably out the window. Um, they might end up selling it again as a digital-only copy for that system. But it's not going to get like remastered with new features, I don't what think. What about Xenoblade X? Xenoblade X is a, is a very good co- a very good thing for that. They could easily up the frame rate. They could up the, the textures Graphics. and all that stuff on oh it. Oh my gosh. Um, they could do Bayonetta 2 could end up coming to it with better frame rate, updated textures, uh, <clears throat> along with Bayonetta 1. They could end up bringing them both over. Uh, they could do, and that would be really, really great um, in the hype leading up to a potential Bayonetta 3. Uh, they could bring over, uh, I, I don't think they're going to because it didn't sell well in the first place, but the wonderful 101 could get that mm-hmm. treatment. Uh, basically, literally any exclusive 3D, not, like non-side-scrolling uh, game that came to the Wii U should should and probably will get remastered and re-released in cartridge form at retail and through digital for the system because uh, I, I have a feeling that a vast majority of people that over time are going to own the Switch never played those games on Wii U. So why waste that library and just let it rot and die off? Yeah. It, it, it should come over. Now, as I said, that doesn't mean they're not going to bring some of the side-scrolling games over. I just don't think it's going to come over in a remastered edition because... There really isn't much they can do to make those games look better. They already run native 1080p at 60 FPS. And and Tropical look Freeze looks great. Yeah, like like they're they're they can add more levels, but you can you're not gonna remaster that. Like, <laughs> like you're not gonna visually be able to tell a difference. It'll be cool to take it on the go, but like it just it, it would just be something I think they would do as a digital release if mm-hmm. they were gonna just bring those games over. But reality is like it's an exclusive Wii U game, so I think all those games are gonna end up eventually over time trickling in. Like they they have like a team dedicated Nintendo that's just remastering old Wii U games and bringing them over. Um, so Hyrule Warriors, definitely going to happen. I think we'll um, get a sequel before we get a remaster. I don't think we're going to get a sequel before we get a remaster. Really? I think we're going to, going to get a full HD re-release of Hyrule Warriors with, uh, with a new subname because they love those subnames. And it's going to be all the content from both versions in HD because that does not exist. And a better co-op mode because the co-op yes. mode is bad. <laughs> all I care about is the frame rate. I don't care if they don't update the textures. I don't care any of that. If they just take what they have now, throw it at the Switch, and it runs at a consistent 60 FPS, I'm, I'm sold. Because all Dynasty Warrior games have issues with frame rate. Well, and if they you can, gotta like, consider why, though, with the amount of enemies that they have. Sure, sure, but <clears throat> if they make zero changes to the game and throw it no, at the I, Switch, I know. it should be able to handle it at 60. I would hope. We don't actually, we don't know the I mean, they kind of... For all we know, it's a Wii U, and, you know, we, we have no... We actually I mean, don't know the They kind of switched that... Or switched. They kind of changed that with the 3DS <laughs> version by sure. changing the draw distance. Yeah, so I don't, and the 3DS I don't really... version actually has better frame rate. Yeah, I don't uh, want uh, them oh, to do that. Correction: but. the new when you play it on a new 3DS XL, it has better. Frame Just rate. don't turn on the 3D; yeah. or the frame yeah. rate drops. Yeah, um, but the the OG 3DS, it, it no, it, it just tanks. On the OG 3DS, it runs like it's basically not even playable, play in, in my opinion. Um, I'm not saying, okay. You know what? I used to play World of Warcraft at like eight FPS in raids, <laughs> so it's more playable than that. Wow. So I guess I won't say it's unplayable. But. <clears throat> um. So moving on to the next topic, uh, this might be one of the last fan topics we get to tonight. 
Um, let me let me pick up pick a good one here. Uh, we talked about wear and tear, so we'll we'll, we'll skip over that one. Um, a Breath of the Wild one. Uh, another Breath of the Wild version difference. Um, so let me. We'll, 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 I'm gonna kind of combine um, a, a couple of these because I deal with Switch and the Breath of the Wild. Um, first, uh, Quarg Finnery. F- uh, sorry, Quarg Finnery. I probably butchered that last name. It. It's just the way it is. Uh, if the Switch <laughs> does, he doesn't even care. Now. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, okay. Put it, it this way: there is a profession like the the guy at Easy Allies, Brandon Jones. He uh does like he he has like training and professional voice work. He butchers people's names all the time because we can't possibly know how they're pronounced. Um, for the most part, like when people look at my last name, there's no way they were pronounced it the way it's actually supposed to be pronounced. <laughs> Because it doesn't make sense. But that's just... Anyways. Um, so, Cork Finger, he says, uh, If the Switch doesn't have dual screens, does that mean Breath of the Wild will have different specs depending on which system you play it on and which one should I buy? And then uh, Diamond Salil says, I would like to know your opinions on Breath of the Wild version differences, not just the dual screen functionality, but also which version will be the we definitive and canon. Know. So, before we get into anything, there is no dual screen functionality. No. So, I... I know some people are still confused by that. I, I mean, they must not have really paid a whole lot of attention during E3. There is that that gamepad screen does nothing. I played the demo. We just had a 40-minute thing. The guy never once looked down at the gamepad screen during that that 40-minute straight d- g- gameplay they showed because it does nothing. All it does does is display like a little pretty graphic. It doesn't give you health. It doesn't give you map stuff. It gives you nothing. And the clear reason for that is because they're pushing. The, the switch version the switch version so <clears throat> they didn't want to have to like build like two different versions like like you guys are worried about you know with the dual screen functionality they didn't want those differences to exist between the versions because that and the would switch be, is oh, confirmed, that would be a reason um, to get the wii u the version. actual like handheld console part yeah uh that cannot function like a gamepad no, yeah that that that's been confirmed by nintendo it does not function like a gamepad so to people who think oh wii u games as they are will just work up no uh-uh. Not, not at least not ones that require that function. Like Mario Maker, we didn't bring that one up before as an example. That's a great candidate to come up, to come to the Switch because it could do everything that the Wii U version does. Then it can combine the extra functionality from the 3DS because even though the 3DS feels gimped, it has the ability to like exchange levels locally on the go. Can the the at the Switch, not the NX, yeah, can the Switch. the Switch controller stream to the TV while still being in your hand? Because, because I know we said there's if there's no like, because that's I don't know how they would do Mario Maker without a touch screen. That, well, that's that, that is hard. unknown. That's not that hard. We it's d- a grid setup. Okay. Okay. Minecraft works without without using the touch screen. That's true. Like it, it's all just a grid setup. You, you can easily just navigate it navigate it with uh with joysticks. It just be. Uh, I'm not saying it's as screen. intuitive, obviously. Yeah. Um, and there could be it, that could also be an example where Nintendo puts that up as an example of look we have touch functionality in it when you're on the go but like we don't require it so when you use it as a console you can just use a controller to do it um, I think they might, that, that might even be an example they point to devs and they're like look you can't require this touch, touch functionality but here's an example where we do have the touch functionality but it's not like a requirement to play the game yeah um, anyways so I just want to get that out of the way because there seems to be some confusion here that there is no dual screen differences that in that way uh the standard controls the basically from all all we know is the standard control differences between the two is that one has the stick above the buttons one has a stick below the buttons that's all we know control wise for differences um otherwise they have the same button layouts and everything between the controllers actually there's more buttons technically on the the uh switch controller because they added like the plus and minus uh, which probably do, do the same functions as we're used to, like a start and select kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they also have Wii like, those four, they have, like those four other buttons on the Pro Controller. And one's a home button, one's a, a mystery button. Uh, it, yeah, but the Wii U has the plus and minus buttons too. Yeah, so that's, that's what I'm real. saying. Like it prob- and the plus and minus on Wii U is basically start and select. It's um, and that mystery button is surmised function, I should say, not to be a share button, as reported by yeah, Laura be. Kate Dale, who was right about a lot of other yeah, things. Might that's, be a share button. That's one thing I can't like. That transition to one thing I wanted to talk about before we stop the Switch conversation. Yeah. One thing that I'm really hoping that Nintendo has learned is how to make a good online functionality. Like, 
what do you guys think about that? Do you think that they will have a better online functionality than the Wii U? Like, will we see friend codes disappear? Um, will we see achievement systems? I think friend systems? codes are gone because Nintendo accounts don't use codes. Yeah. I think the Nintendo account system is going to be the account system on this thing. And that a system does not have codes. It does connect to your current like Wii U 3DS code stuff, but that that's just connecting old hardware to a new system. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that's indicative of what they're going to do in the future. I think, think it's going we'll to be see... all screen name and email based, as it should have been from the very beginning. Yeah. Do you think we'll see achievements? Oh, yeah. There's achievements on Wii U. They just don't have an overall uh, tracking yeah, like, system. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Kind of like a yeah. PSN trophies or an Xbox achievement system. Do you think we'll see something like that? I think with the level of third-party support, it has to. Mm-hmm. I think that's something third parties be like, look, you have to have this. Like People love this. Phones have it. Everything has it. You have to have it. Um, well, technically, phones don't really have it natively. It's I mean, game. they have the game, the game center, or they yeah, did. They, they do have the game center. It's true. So, and then they have some Google equivalent. Yeah, so on the I, I guess yeah, there has to be a center. Especially, um, we didn't mention it yet, but uh, Nvidia did the hardware, mm-hmm. like the, the actual processing stuff that runs this. Um, the custom Tegra chip. Custom Tegra chip that is based on their latest GPU architecture. Which, by the way, their latest GPU architecture is based on Pascal. That's what the 1060, 1070, 1080, and the new Titan XP does. Um, so, if assuming that those words actually mean what they imply, um, this is not a Tegra X1. This is probably originally started as a Tegra X2 chip <coughs> that has been customized and tailored to gaming. Because for those who don't know, the Tegra X1 chip was what was used in NVIDIA Shield and the NVIDIA gaming TV thing, both of which were total flops. Mm -hmm. Um, And the X2, because of the flops, wasn't actually supposed to be a gaming chip. It was actually going to be a chip aimed at uh, GPS systems and cars. So they were were actually targeting the car market with it to try to take away some of that market share from AMD. Um, So... Technically, the Tegra X2 wasn't supposed to be a gaming chip, which is why I think they mentioned that it's a custom chip that includes architecture from like their latest gaming stuff. Uh, so again, and that can let also me hit, just say the powerful. Switch has something that yeah. looks like uh, a cooling, a cooling uh, vent. It's definitely a cooling it. vent. There's nothing else that can. Yeah, do. that is a cooling vent. Um, based on all the like, I just built a PC based on all the PC stuff of it. Like that is cooling, like a very obvious cooling vent. Yeah. So. Which suggests it has a fan, which means it has to cool the crap out of the GPU. or Which CPU. means it's powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How powerful? Don't know. Um, obviously, you know, I don't know. We, we, we have no idea. Um, not even the people that are reporting port- on rumors really agree. Some think it's Xbox One level. Some think it's below Xbox One. Some think it's PS4. Um, there's a lot of conflicting reports because I don't even think the devs that have the, the dev units in hand, one, have the final version of the dev units. I think there's multiple versions out there, so that's why there's conflicting reports. And two, I don't think they've any of them have pushed the system to its max to know what it's capable of. Um, like, no one's actually broken down the hardware. So I, they might even be waiting on Nintendo to be like, hey, this is, this is what it does. <clears throat> Um, they might know the RAM and all that stuff, obviously. Yeah. Like, I think the rumor right now is 4 gigs of RAM, um, mm. which... Which, by the way, is what my smartphone has. It's actually, like, I know people are like, oh, 4 gigs of RAM. Like, RAM isn't... I know, like, PlayStation 4 has 8. You don't actually need 8 gigs of RAM if you know what you're doing. Yeah. It's more it, so, I think the PlayStation 4, when it launched, it had 8, but you could only use, like, 6 of it for gaming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, a lot of it's based on how it's optimized. And if NVIDIA is in on the ground floor doing this, like, NVIDIA is just as invested in this working as Nintendo is. That's the only takeaway you could take away where NVIDIA wants this to be powerful because it's a showcase for them to potentially get future gaming hardware contracts. Um, so they really want this to take off. Nintendo really wants it to take off. So hopefully it's powerful enough. Don't expect the PlayStation 4 Pro in your pocket. It's not happening. <laughs> Yeah, that's not happening. It's already bad enough if it's a Xbox One in your pocket <clears throat> and you get three hours of battery life. So, yeah. I mean, I'm okay with that personally, but a lot of people will be like, oh, only three hours? Remember, guys, it's yeah. a home console. Stop thinking, like, maybe that's why Nintendo's hammer. No, it's a home console that you can take with you and play for a few hours. But, like, it's a home console. Keep that in mind. So it's not going to have amazing battery life. It's mm-hmm. going to be like your gaming laptop, you know, like you have uh, over there, Mr. Alfred. Unplug that baby and see how long you can play Crisis 3. Not very long. It ain't going to be very long. Well, and that, it shouldn't be. 
And that's one of the things, too, that you have to consider, that it's impressive that it can still run 720 at, um, yeah. with just on a battery. I, I think people are worried that the 720... I, I think the biggest worry about that isn't so much the screen being 720. I think they're worried that all games are going to be native 720, and then yeah. they just get upscaled. I think they'll be downscaled. I'm personally. hoping it's downscaled. Yeah, well, I really and hope even, it's downscaled. And even with that, like consider the three-hour battery life. If I, like If I take my computer off of the power, I've got maybe sure. 30 minutes to an hour of gameplay, and sometimes yeah. the fact that it's not plugged in, the system itself... I, will divert power and divert ram away from the game so it's not as stressful like mm-hmm. this it's really weird because i can do stuff like play god eater um rage burst on here without it being plugged in but if i try mm-hmm. to play binding of isaac it slows it down and so that's one of the things that i think would be impressive is that it could still run things not so necessarily as comparable to my gaming pc sure but at a level that a basic gaming PC could run it without it always having to be plugged in. So, and I think that's impressive enough. To, to bring this back around to the fan topics, and, and maybe we'll get Kristen involved here because he hasn't done a lot of talking yet. Um, you know, the, the, These two people are basically talking about differences between the versions. Um, you know, that Are there going to be major differences between them based on the specs of the system? Um and uh, which system you play it on, and and the other one you know is is kind of looking at it more from a hardcore Zelda perspective of which version is considered canon because like Twilight Princess was on two systems, but the GameCube version is considered the canon version of the game. Um, not just because people think it's better, it's because it started development on that system. Um, so, Kristen, is this going to be another situation where it started on Wii U, so it's Wii U's the canon version, no matter how good the other version is? I think so. I think you brought it up. Or they brought up. You guys brought it up earlier in that you know this game was originally developed for the at first was we just the Wii U and then like and X ran right into it. So I think the Wii U is gonna be the can version overall. I mean, personally for me, regardless, I'm gonna get the game. But if it comes down to it, I'll probably just get the game for the Wii U because I already have the Wii U and I don't have to worry about you know yeah. if it's just one game investing in the NX at least with. I already have the Wii U. The I Switch. Can... <laughs> oh, sorry, NX Switch. Bottom, whatever. It's okay. Yeah. We're all struggling. Yeah, sorry. You know, if you know, Switch is great and all, but I already have the Wii U. All I gotta do is pay like what sure. sixty bucks for Breath of the Wild, and that's it. Oh, totally. With, totally. with Switch, I have to make that additional investment of a system. I don't know a lot of you know. I don't know a lot of games I want for it just yet. Yep. Um. Yeah. To me, uh, you know, speaking from a hardcore perspective about canon, uh, there was a big difference between the GameCube and the and the Twilight Princess, like between GameCube and Wii, in that the world was flipped and mm-hmm. mirrored. Um, forget controls, like that's what makes the GameCube version feel canon because that was how the game was originally developed, and they admitted they mirrored it for for the Wii, so that you uh, could be right-handed. So you could be right-handed because a, mo- a majority of play of gamers are right-handed, which made left-handed gamers be like, "What? Why does that matter?" Um, which it real to be honest, it really doesn't. But Nintendo just did it because they did it, and whatever. I, I guess it worked. I don't really know if it made a difference in sales, but I don't think in this case there's really going to be a debate over which version is canon because I think they're basically going to be the same game. I don't think we're getting mirrored worlds. We're not definitely not getting a different control scheme. Um, I don't think there's going to be enough major differences between the games to be like, yeah, the Wii U version is canon because it was what it was developed on. I, I don't think you're going to have like big version differences. I think it's going to be cosmetic differences. Yeah, it's going to be cosmetic, and cosmetics aren't going to matter unless, this is a big unless, they change some of the text in the game. That's the only way I think we can start having a debate over which version is canon because if there's messages on the Sheikah Stones that say one thing in the Wii U version that says something different on that, that same stone. And uh, in the uh, in the next... And, and I'm sorry, the NX almost said it again. The Switch version. Um, then you could start having a debate over what's canon. Uh, the only way that that might get washed away is if those texts are dynamically generated from a, a bunch of different texts. So, but that's something we won't find out for a long time. Um, so I, I don't think there's going to be... I don't think they're going to do that because I don't think they have a reason to do that. Um, yeah, they really don't. You know, yeah. 
I, I mean, it'd have to be one rogue developer being like, yeah. <laughs> I want to put developer. my name in the I'm going to change this text. Screw let, you let me, guys, his name is Lonk now. Yeah, oh, we're changing the name of all the characters because I want to. <laughs> um, which, you, 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 I mean, that's basically what all the local translation teams do. Sakurai's that's just why, sitting uh, in a corner like it's That's why, uh, oh, what's, what's a character off the top of your guys' head that has like different names in different territories? Oh, don't do that to me. Um... In uh, Zelda? Yeah, All in I Zelda. know is that they put a Dogi meme Glass, in like two Triforce in that Heroes. That were totally different named between versions. Was it Burn? Burn? Byron. Yeah, tracks. Byron. Whatever. Yeah. Let me look it up. Yeah. Burn. Like, the, like, I only know, you know, the American... I used to know, like, the European name of it, too, and the Japanese one, but... Um, it's, like, really weird how they do that. So it is possible that differences like that exist, but I don't think we're going to be arguing about what game's canon this time around. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of what game is... You know, considered like a definitive version. Um, I'm assuming the Switch version is going to be considered definitive because it's probably, probably, we don't know for sure, probably going to run at a higher FPS. It's going to look prettier and it might even run at a native higher resolution. Nintendo says it's going to look better. Yeah, they so say let's it's hope they make but, good but on But again, that. we don't know for sure. We haven't technically seen official Switch footage yet. We have seen, right. you know, footage of the game you know, superimposed because on the, the Switch. Switch footage was superimposed so, in the trailer, yeah. like so, we said earlier. So until we get like actual footage, and, and the thing is, like they did that, and that <laughs> same day they released three videos, three trailers for the game, and they were all Wii U footage. And then they just released another forty-minute video uh, on Monday. You know, that was all Wii U footage. So it makes me wonder if they even really showed Switch footage that time around. And if they didn't, then hot damn, they're <laughs> really making some strides with that Wii U version. Yeah. Visually, um, but again, uh, we we don't know. So I, I think the Switch version will be considered the definitive version, and I don't think we're gonna have a debate like we did with Twilight Princess, or even Link's Awakening. Like Link's Awakening, the original game, like that's the canon game. Link's Awakening DX is is not considered canon, mm-hmm. um, even though it's got color and extra dungeon. That's just considered extra content. That's not that's not part of something you take into consideration for timeline stuff and all that. Um, we'll see. So, so let's get into the final part of the podcast, and we're only doing this because you know we're technically slightly over time, because um, I, I wanted to kind of keep this down to ninety minutes. But obviously, we had a lot to talk about, man. You guys have even more <laughs> topics. I guarantee we'll be talking about Switch and Breath of the Wild like crazy the rest of this year. Of course, then again, I don't know because Alfred will be choosing the topics in the future. Probably so we'll see what he still wants probably to talk be. about. Probably nothing, still the same stuff. Nothing but Dark Siders news. Oh my gosh! Dark Siders <laughs> no man's been complaining um, about No Man's so, Sky. So, favorite thing that happened in this past week? We're gonna kind of keep this a, a little, a little brief this time around. <clears throat> I know Alfred had something besides the Switch. I'm assuming this isn't really my favorite thing. This is something that I kind of want to raise a, awareness of. Oh, here we um, go. Preach it, if, brother. If you guys don't know, I'm gonna kind of give you a rundown of what's going on right now in the voice acting. Alfred's community. gonna learn you. Yeah, I'm gonna learn you some some information right some here. Some voice acting. Let's go. So, um, the Screen Actors Guild and American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, SAG AFTRA, which is a really weird name, um, they're on strike right now. And because of. There's there's a lot of different things that this goes into. I'd recommend you guys look up the article by Will Wheaton and what Steve Bloom have to say about it. If you're if you know who those are, I'm like sure. huge huge mm-hmm. uh, voice acting fan. Um, like like I said, I love Troy Baker, um, and so I have a huge respect for these guys and what they do because what they do is very taxing on their voices, and sometimes it often leaves them without like the ability to use their voices later on. Um, but the, it talks they talk about working conditions and how they're um, you know how in movies where you have a stunt double, oftentimes they're not provided a stunt double when they have to do um, mocap, and so they're going to be doing all of this stuff themselves, which is not necessarily good. Um, but it goes th- both of these articles that they write about go through the different uh, negotiations that they're talking about and that different things that they need or want for future voice actors too. Um, so this applies to you guys if you ever want to get into voice acting. I kind of do. It's really not where my, my profession is leading me right now, but. Uh, a lot of people are on their case because of uh, they're worried about that the whole thing's just about money, and it's not. It, you, you might hear that um, from the, some CEOs. They're talking about different. There are different companies that are they're on the strike Donald with. Trump effect. Yeah, um, 
there are there's a bunch of different companies that they're on strike with uh some prominent ones right now you're gonna hear take two um insomniac activision um ea wb um they're kind of struck from that union right now just because they're refusing to work with them on better conditions for the voice actors um and they kind of you know residuals are important but that's not their main uh problem with this so I just kind of wanted to raise awareness for that because this is something that I'm very interested in. A lot of my favorite uh, voice actors like Todd Habercorn, um, Steve Bloom are, are speaking out about it. So if you guys want to find out about it, if you guys want to um, <clears throat> tweet about it, the hashtag is hashtag performance matters. So not really my favorite thing that's happened this week, but I just wanted to get that out there and let you guys know about it. Nice. No, that's, that's always good. Um, voice actors don't always get the respect they deserve. Um and beyond that, uh, if they are going to get any sort of respect, it should come from the companies that hire them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, you guys as gamers and as consumers of entertainment, you don't have to show appreciation for it. There, there's people who love watching movies, but they, they don't really, you know, necessarily care about the name of the actor or the actress. Yeah, um, I, that's that's something that I love. I know that not everybody's like, yeah. oh, I got, I know who that is. Like, I yeah. love picking up people's voices in movies and animes yeah. and TV shows. Oh yeah, same here. Yeah, so <laughs> so it's one of those that. Even if um, you're not like like Alfred and Kristen here, where, where, where you enjoy getting really deep into who did what and, and figuring all that stuff out, it's just important really in any profession that there is um, treatment that helps um, encourage uh, the, the people in that profession to mm-hmm. do it to the best of their abilities while not harming themselves at the same time. Um, and there's a lot of professions out there where things are just too demanding and it's not, as you said, it's not just about money. It's about the conditions of the work being asked of your, mm-hmm. of them. Um, and sometimes having unrealistic expectations. Mm-hmm. It's almost the same as, you know, the quote-unquote crunch that goes on with some game developers where they have to work 80-hour weeks for six months straight and never see their family. Like, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff should never happen. And that's why I really and encourage that, reading. That happens with voice actors as well. They have to put in some ungodly hours at times that just, like, like could destroy your voice. Yeah. That's why I really recommend reading. I really recommend reading Will Wheaton's um, post. If you know who that is, he's Wesley in Star Trek Generations. Yeah. Um, His he writes about um, gives you an example of what it's like. Um, I don't have time to read the whole thing, but it's a very good example just to imagine and to to listen to what he has to say. Because I know this may not matter to everyone, but it's something that not necessarily should matter, but does matter. Yeah. Um, Like like Nathan said, it's it's an important. For us, it's an important thing as gamers to hear voice actors and to hear them in games because they tell a story and they, they make us feel sometimes. Yep. It's just one of, it's one of those things where there is yet another section of entertainment that isn't getting um, the care that they deserve mm-hmm. while they're performing the profession. So, um, so that's why I directly related it to programmers <clears throat> that are asked to work ungodly hours. It's not healthy. Yeah. Um, it's not healthy for them, for their family, for the voice actors who are equally asked to do insane things with their voice, um, which is fine. They enjoy doing that kind of stuff, but doing it at certain levels for certain periods of time that just are not healthy. Yeah. Um, but they do it, not just because they need the money, because that's what they were hired to do. That's what their contract is. Um, it shouldn't be that way. There needs to be set standards um, that really really benefit everybody because then the voice actor can do voice acting for longer periods of time, mm-hmm. which is what I think what everybody wants. Like everyone would love to have Troy Baker doing voice acting forever. No, oh, yeah. But what if his voice just dies on him in three years? I want, I want him to voice my life. Like, <laughs> you just nar- narrate narrate, narrate your autobiography. Yes. Um, so, uh, for me, favorite thing in this last week is obviously the Switch. I haven't been able to think about anything but Switch and that <laughs> little snippet of Breath of the Wild footage. I did watch Game Explains Analysis. Um, I suggest anybody who really, really loves Mario and uh, assuming that this Mario footage we saw is actually from the new Mario game, um, I highly suggest you go over to Game Explain and watch their 30 minute breakdown. I th- wait, maybe it was only 11 minute breakdown. It, it, whatever, it was a really long breakdown over six seconds of footage. <laughs> Um, and believe it or not, I know Game Explain is known for going over the top. It was worth the explanation they gave. Um, so I highly suggest people go check that out. Um, it, it, it found a lot of things in it. Like it, it found a heart that suggests a health system like Mario 64. Um, it found an enemy down in the sand that only appears for like a half second on screen. 
Um, they, they just find a lot of crazy things that really, really, really are just, it's just really interesting stuff. Um, so if you love Mario, go check out their thing. I'll probably put a link down in the description. And I'll put a link down uh, for uh, the, the article that Alfred's talking about as well if you guys want to learn some more information about what's going on with the battle between the Screen Actors Guild and all this stuff. Um, and speaking of Game Explain, uh, while this podcast recording was going on, I was having a conversation in our news chat at Zelda Informer. Apparently the interview that we referenced earlier regarding the actor f- in the trailer, yeah. Game Explain got an interview with him, yep. that video has been taken down. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me that the information that I saw on it, we should probably do a report on it, huh? What would you say, Nate? You cut out. Oh, I was saying uh, the information that we got uh, from that, that I even off the top of my head, because I don't think we ever reported anything from it. It's uh, the trailer is up on, was up yeah, on the website. It was up yeah, on the website. Did, did we have a private. breakdown for it? I don't think. We did not. Yeah, we, we need to get a breakdown um, just so the details aren't lost. Well, the video is not taken down. It's private now. Well, yeah. Well, the, the video has been... It, yeah, it, it's gone through a takedown. Like, it's not deleted from That's YouTube, true. but it's not going to be public probably ever again. Nintendo Nintendo came out and waved the hammer. There must have, there must, that's the thing. That means there was something he said in there that he wasn't supposed to. Yep. No. Maybe they so. didn't want them knowing that it wasn't uh, native. <laughs> well, the thing is, I'm sure I could head over to Gaff because that's probably a big deal. Like, Gaff got taken down. They'll probably <laughs> have a big, a big breakdown of every detail. Like, what is the one detail that slipped in there that nobody here thought was a big deal, but apparently is a big deal. Mm-hmm. No. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. Anyone else got any anything special this week besides the Switch that they're excited about? Um, I am excited for the upcoming Animal Crossing Direct. Yes. When Ooh. is that? Uh, I the first of November sticks out in my mind, but I'm I'm not sure on that. Okay. Oh, um, um, I am excited I'm for just the upcoming. A huge obviously, fan. this is Switch related. I'm excited for the upcoming investors meeting. Oh yes, that Done. too. Which I, we'll again, be having coverage of that on Zelda so. Informer. <laughs> yeah. The mini Kristen, direct. Got anything you're excited about? Uh, no, not really. I've been, I've been mainly just bit, swept up in the switch. No, you know, not this that. I've been really busy <laughs> with school and stuff, so I haven't really been like excited. You're not allowed to be, have a life. <laughs> like the only, like only other thing besides the switch I got excited for was the um, announcement of Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead. There we go. I was hoping mm-hmm. someone was going to bring that up. Like that's yeah, I haven't kind seen of the, the big announcement yet. that's being, um, kind of like not talked about much. Um, oh yeah. Know. Yeah, like I go oh. to, I go to NeoGaf and like because Red Dead Redemption Two is like a big announcement and it's just Nintendo Switch after Nintendo Switch after Nintendo Switch thread. You can't even find Red Dead Redemption on the first page most of the time. Um, it's 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 crazy and it's not just there. It's the same as at IGN. It's everywhere. Um, man, Red Dead Redemption Two. a bad day to reveal. That. <laughs> Red Dead Redemption Two. I I mm-hmm. like that trailer. I haven't there. seen it yet. It's in it's Japan. Japan. Yes. The, the, I won't spoil it. Just the just mini go direct watch it. is for good. November like second in Japan. Japan. Just, just watch this. <laughs> the the uh, mini maybe, direct. Maybe I'll throw a little clip in it. You better watch it by Wednesday because I'm gonna throw a clip of the trailer up in the up in the podcast in Darren's little slot. Little the, okay, uh, yeah, I'll make sure to watch it by then. Little teaser. The the Nintendo Direct for Animal Crossing is November second. That's second. Japan though. We don't get a U.S. version so oh. far. So far. Wait, we don't get a U.S. version. We don't oh. know when a date is announced for the U.S. version of the presentation, oh. but we know. Oh, that's stupid! Oh, oh man, I hate when joke. they do those region-specific directs. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, hey, also if you're interested, they they dropped a Logan trailer, which is the next Wolverine movie. Damn, so that it's was, another yes. trailer I haven't seen. Yet. That was and one awesome. Last, and one one last uh, Switch thing. I think they're projecting three hundred twenty million dollars in profit per year for Nvidia. Mm-hmm. Um. Just to give you an example of that's what Nvidia's cut is, so just imagine what Nintendo is probably projected to make off this thing. Lots uh, of so stuff. So yeah, but put it this way: the Switch is projected by almost every analyst out there to be a success. Mhm. Mhm. So, one noted analyst that some people might know, David Gibson, uh, projected 10 million units within the first year. So that that's pretty yeah, good. a lot of a lot of projections between eight and ten, which either either number is really good for Nintendo. So, like, 10 is basically matching the Wii U's current install base. 8 is more than the Wii U ever sold in a single year. So, yeah, keep in mind the Wii U has sold, to date, 13 million units. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, either, either number's excellent. So, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you guys next week when we probably have... Um, 
even more. Nintendo yeah. Switch news coming out of that. And next meeting. week, Alfred and will be Alfred the gets one, to uh, not only lead the podcast but lead it while I'm here and Whoa. edit it, which and edit it. So it's gonna, it's probably gonna see some differences. We'll see. Yeah, that'll be my first time editing with three separate videos. So we'll yep. see how that goes. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. And, I, and you know, I'll obviously Alfred, I'll, I'll be helping you out a little bit with yeah. the templating and stuff if you need it. But you can come right, give well, me a massage while I'm doing it. Yeah, thanks for joining us on this week's episode of the Zelda Informer Podcast. As always, it's been great hosting it for these last 22 episodes now. I'm sure I'll be hosting a few in the future. Yeah. Um, like if we do another live from E3 one, I'm assuming Alfred won't be there. Well, maybe Alfred. Maybe we'll get Alfred there. Maybe. maybe. If you guys, if Massey loves me enough, I'll get there. So but... Massey's, Massey's, you need to pay for him to go. <laughs> you need to pay yeah. for me to go. <laughs> I, just, All right, I, I don't even care about E3, just pay me. Just pay me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next week. See ya. See ya. Later.